Jody, did you see the thing on Facebook? About, um, about the buses tomorrow? Uh, at 6 o'clock, do a call of order. Um, if they sign this tag. First one on the agenda is. Recording in progress. First one on the agenda is community input. Is there any community input? State your name, sir, please. Eric Voss. Here uh, to represent uh, American Legion Post 47. Yeah. Uh, two weeks we have the Family Fun Day event. Um, I'm hoping that we can possibly get some help from the town as far as uh, trash goes. Possibly get a truck down there that we can just keep loading up and that can get brought away. We got a very small container down there for our own uh, stuff. Um, I did see somebody put out a uh, sign up genius for volunteers. Um, I don't know who that was, I don't remember, but. That is going to be uh, super helpful if people do sign up for that. Um, we have a very busy weekend down there that weekend. Um, so if we can get, like I said, a truck, maybe uh, next morning if you guys can help us just kind of pick up odds and ends when you grab the truck. George, um, what's your thought about that? I don't mind supplying the truck, but... Uh, manpower? Yeah, I don't okay. want manpower. So, um, so you, they could... And I would, know, I would have probably left the day for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Instead of paying somebody to come in and get it, or myself, I won't be around for that weekend. I mean, even if we can just get a truck that we can just yeah. put all the uh, deposits into... Yeah, because they'll have the one ton down there and put the stuff in the back of that, and we can bring it up to the... And that's entirely up to you people. Yep, no, I'm okay with that. It's just we just leave the truck, and then the we'll volunteers will load it up, and then... We'll I mean, what just... he... He drives the truck anyways from C and J when they bring it into service and stuff. So mm -hmm. if he wants, we can have, he can drive it back to the shop if he wants to just leave it that way at the end of the day instead of leaving it down there. And that's entirely up to you too, Eric. Okay. Yep, I don't see a problem. Okay. Uh, no, that's fine. I was just thinking about volunteers. Um, I wonder if maybe the town might consider, you know, sending something on the web more about volunteers at Family Fun Day. I know Denise has put something out there already with Family Fun Day about volunteers and stuff oh, like did. that. Uh, okay. Whether they should get much luck with that, I have no idea. But I did see something earlier, you know, they were having it or whatever. And it was still going on apparently. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah we, we, got a, we got a good crew down there. So, I mean, obviously any extra help would go a long way. But, I mean, I think we're manpower. We can probably do it. It's just going to be really tight considering the next event on Sunday starts at noontime. So. Oh, another one. You having softball? No, that's a uh, that's a benefit event for uh, Mark England. Oh. I think is that on the agenda tonight too? I thought so. That is on the agenda. Okay. Yeah, I have a problem with that. Thanks for volunteering too. Okay. Um, Thank you. I mean, I I can probably I don't know what Gary's schedule is. I know his wife works on Sunday, so he might be available for you. You know, as a volunteer, because he lives in town anyway. So I can talk to Gary tomorrow or okay. sometime soon. Okay. Yeah, and if you could just let me know, and then. Yep. Um, we'll just go from there. Okay. So, George and Eric, do you know how to get in touch with each other? Oh yeah, we'll be seeing each other because the trucks are in for inspection now. All right, very good. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you. Eric, what was your last name? Foss. Foss. Yeah, thank you. What's your address? Six fifty four Main Street. Uh, is there any community input on the? Uh... Oh. Oh. I have somebody in the waiting room. So. Oh yes. Um, is there any community input online? Well, let's give Charlie one second because he's connecting the audio. Yep, that's not a problem. Charlie, do you have any community input? I'll take that as a no. Okay. All right. <laughs> Moving on. All right, so the pop. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Right. The sent down approval of minutes. Have you had a chance to read 20, 20 bits of data? Yeah. You okay with it? Yes. Okay, I'm okay with it too. So. Motion to accept um, the consent calendar. Yeah, Eric. What's it do? And I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 18th. Okay. Yeah. There's no flyers, so we'll move on to <laughs> Highway and Road Service Marina Plan. George, just a just a quick question of thought when I was before I, before I was still in my head. So about three select board meetings ago, 
maybe we got a little more in depth. There was a discussion about the Nicole Hill Road and the problem with the ATVs. Yeah, I, yeah. Talked, I talked to, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bruce. Today, actually. The it's ATV Carmaster? Uh, Bruce. Uh, Bruce York? Yeah, Bruce. Yeah. I talked to him today. Uh, they're going to put some gravel in the end of that to try to avoid it. And it's not always their ATV group, of course, so they're not going to take chat, take blame for it. But uh, I told them, I said, you know, you got to have put some signs up to slow them down and stop digging up the road, or else, you know, it's going to be an issue for you guys. Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. sell them. He's pretty and he's, uh, he's willing to, on those trails that are out there that are deep and stuff like that, if we have some fill, if we dump it somewhere, they'll, they'll, the ATV club is willing to spread it and take care of that stuff out there. So. If you guys want us loose, you know, if we have some fill out there, we can drop it for them. Yeah, you're talking fill, like not paint not, fill. Not, no, yeah, stuff yeah. that we dig out of. Yeah, yeah, that I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, Thank you. Okay. I got a PO for Urban Tree, PO number 2034. For $6,200, that'll be to take those big pines down at the end of Woods Run and one up big pine on. Clement Road, however, this stuff is not going to happen until the end of December, first week in January. We get these, but he wants to get it on the schedule, so we want to make sure we have PO for it. What, what's, when do you, when you say that's going to happen? December. End of December, early January. Okay. Um, we'll put them on the schedule. Um, is it, I'm just going to ask a quick question. Does it have anything to do with power lines? Or is it just? There is a crane work at uh, Woods Run, so it, that one there is, I don't know if, if the power company takes it out, that he won't be doing it. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. Okay. But there's some across the street from that that need to be done anyway. So that's, that's good. As he'll use the money we have in our budget for this year's tree work. Okay. So I'm going to just ask an obvious question because there's a lot of trees. I've always yep. got the blue ribbons, which is going to be They're coming in and grab a bunch of trees, that'd be great. Okay. <laughs> there is there any blue ribbons on any of those trees? I haven't noticed recently. Okay. Is that a public service on the line? So like on my road, and there's quite a few roads with blue ribbons around trees, and these the trees that are going to cut, get cut by, I don't know who Comcast who uses, but who they use. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they come around and every three years. So it's Comcast, not Polo Service. No, Comcast, okay. Yeah. So they got a lot of trees to cut in town. I think it's a lot of job. Which is well, free. That's good. Sort of free. Yeah. All right. Second that, all in favor? Mm -hmm. So that's 
so you know there'll be some some of it extra work involved with that. But that should be they have outside contractors that they can contract and usually deal with to try to get them up to where they should be. And depending on the scope of the damages and some uh, structures. How many miles of road do we have? Uh, 17 miles of road with 34 lane miles. Okay, gotcha. George, where's Mill Street? Right up behind the Behind the mill. Okay. Uh, and I wish I had some directing on who owns what because they park everywhere down in the mail yard down there. Yes. You know, I mean, I don't know what the mapping is for that or, you know, where the property lines are. Or, that is a touch and go one. I guess it's breaking up, you know, it's breaking up from the pocket launch into the road and vice versa. And they want us to fix, you know, hot stuff, but of course it goes into their stuff. Oh, where, where does Pine Street fall on the list? Because that one's pretty rough, too. Yeah, I, I, Pine, it's, looking at these, the care is, is it scheduled 2025, slot, the uh, stock here is not until 2025 on that. Okay. Road plan they had, but of course, looking at the road plan, they had cracks going on some of these. And the Pine Street and 2021 rehabilitation, some of it should probably be some of it done this year. I mean, we can treat, like I said, okay. we can bring change some of it around, but yeah. you know, a lot of it, there's been a lot of talk about Stockdale and McCarris. There's a second of McCarris at the apartment house that's breaking up all the time. We're putting the whole patch in there. But, uh, it's in that shaded area, of course. But uh, that'll probably have to be dug out and, and rebuilt there, yeah, but the rest of the people know over there. It's, you know, I haven't got cold in under this stuff, so not knowing how much we're going to have and how much we can do. Is that the last copy of the strap of the It's the old. Of the strap of the The original, original one they did in 2017. Can okay. we get a copy of that? Yeah, please. Can I take that and I'll give it back? Just a quick question, or so. Tell the parking lot right out here. Uh, it was they wanted to do it this week, but I'm not going to let them do it while they're doing the work out front. Yeah, they're making too much stuff in there. I haven't, I haven't caught well, it. Did you have you, you contacted them? Um, oh, sorry, I'll change the subject for a second. So, so I contacted the engineer who's going to just, you know, one of their structural people from their firm come out and look at it while there are no columns and provide a scope and quote for the scope. I'm concerned about. You know, if there's a problem, you're going to pave it and then you're going to dig it up next year or in two years to deal with whatever the underlying structural problem yeah. is. I guess, I guess, I mean, a short term solution to you pave everything and leave a small section that's not paid to do the work. But that's I think we can get to the winter already. Right? Okay. Right. And we'll, uh, that's what we'll do then. And if we want to put it off, I got a better use for some of that money. Okay. What do you got? Crack ceiling, I got it on the list. Oh, okay. And if you look at the old template, they were looking at 10,000 for one road, 5,000 for another road, and uh, 2,000 for another road. But after looking at the transfer station, some of the cracks in there that are starting to come through. Bear Road, Boundary Street, and Pinch Hill, I got to post to do all of that in cracks here. Pinch Hill looks like newly paved. That's, those are the roads that you want to catch. Those are the roads that were paved prior to me. Okay. So four or five years, you want to go and make sure there's not a lot of cracking. Yep. You know, ceiling cracks, you go to wide, it's under the side of the road, and the road okay. so that causes cracks. I got a quote of 7850 to do all four of those projects this year if we want to have it done. I did not do a PO on it because I didn't know how this was going to go. But if you decide you want not to do the front of the parking lot this year because of underlying issues, I think we could probably get by for you know, I mean, the parking lot's not falling apart per se. It's got some bad bumps and stuff in it. We could tear it apart next year and do it, you know, yeah, the project stuff. I'm okay. The only thing is, I, I was going to ask the same question as Kim was Pinch Road does in pretty good shape, but since she gets it that way and touch it, I'm okay with you. Well, I had to go out and look at all the roads with cracks and measure. There's 11,155 feet of cracks on these four roads. Oh, well, on three roads plus, plus the transfer station. And that's. Like I said, uh, Strapping Regional, whoever did the road thing, uh, had estimates of 10,000 for a road, you know, like through uh, Boundary or Railroad, and then, you know, 7,000, 2,000. So, I mean, I thought 7,850 was a pretty good buy to try to get these roads before they get too far. 
Can we look at the start of regional planning before we make a decision? No problem with that. Well, we don't, he doesn't have a PO over the side of the planning. Yeah. I'll, I'll scan yeah. and get it to them. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I, the price is good now. I don't know. I'm sure you'll keep it the same for the rest of the season. So you'll, and you'll get it in before the season. Okay. Thank you. So the, the um, road surface management plan. Um, so that's been budgeted for this year already. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion to move forward um, with the SRPC proposal. Yep, I will second that. I'll do it. Aye. Aye. Now we're taking. Am I going to be involved with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we need a man. So we um, do we have a Yeah, no, it's when I do do a drive, we don't do the carrots, but I do drive now by carrots, and it's, that's a deal. Right, I mean, it's, we could say, we could probably do most of that with just an overlay, but like you said, there's a section down here by the apartment building, starting at the five corner and the shade down there, it's pretty rough. So, and I don't know if you wanted to put, you know, if we do that road, we probably ought to think about doing parking at the same time, but we're in the area, because that's, you know, I mean, they're the bus, it's a dead end, so. Yeah. Thank you for putting that list together, George. Uh, since you're here, you want to do, is there any, um, any information that you want to bring up to transfer station? Uh, nothing other than, you know, the, uh, what I brought up about doing the crack ceiling. I had nothing to do with it. Okay, just wondering what you're doing. I'd say uh, for Monday, you want to get that PO ready. For the cracking? For 7850, yeah. All right. Thank you, George. Okay. Thank you, George. Well, we should have a little bit of opinion on the board. They see the board. What's the worst words that you've got? Thank you. We looked on that. We looked on that. Uh, Chief isn't available tonight, so I'm okay. Um, we got two POs. The first one is number 2024, and that's to AAA Police Supply. That's for uh, one ballistic vest and one carrier for that ballistic vest for our newest employee who just started on the first. And that is the amount of $1,269 and zero cents. I'll make a motion to approve PO 2024 to AAA for $1,269. I'll second that. Is there any discussion at all? Uh, I don't have any. So I just got a quick discussion. Can I see that for one second? Yeah. So I'm just curious how much, I'm totally following this on but how much more equipment do you think the new, the new police officers will need? Um, that's about the end of the major items, if you will. Okay. Um, some uniform stuff on this PO, um, a flashlight, which is going to be kind of our equipment line. Um, but other than that, I think the only thing left is a belt that I need to order, which is about $68 per inch. Just curious. Um, How are they doing? Good. About that. Yep. So um, he's getting through policy stuff right now and learning geography and whatnot. Um, let me get sworn in, I believe, next week. Perfect. All right. So, so can I take it? Uh, thank you. And this next PO is number 2025 to Galls. 
and it is for 11 long sleeve shirts, 7 uniform pants, and the one flashlight. And that's in the amount of $1,169.11. And this is just for uh, uniforms for everybody because they wear out. The one sale. Look terrible, and the new flashlight is on there. It's for those employees, like I mentioned.
last year this came up, I think. Oh, okay. two years ago now. Two years ago. It was, it's recurring now. So, um, retired Chief Douche Arm and now Chief Grass Commission, I went out there. Uh, it was within two years ago, this problem came up. Um, and we went out there and kind of took inventory of what was there. I believe at the time, the decision that that current select board, that the, the select board at the time made was that we weren't going to try and evict these people, if you will, because of the complications regarding mm -hmm. what we do with them or provide them with some sort of services. I'm not exactly sure what the, the reason for that was, but we kind of said, well, keep an eye on it, live along. Um, I'm assuming that Brown was on Calum Drive. Yes. Um, so I can tell you that as far as reporting goes and stuff, I have not seen I can't specifically think of a report where somebody from Calvin Drive has called us and said somebody has stolen this. Or, um, so I have heard third hand accounts of thefts and stuff like that because of being out there for other calls, but um, we weren't necessarily aware as a police department that it had become an issue again until just recently because if people don't report things to us, we have a hard time knowing exactly what's going on. All right, so so I think you, you already asked my question you said it's been a few years. So this is like a permanent settlement that goes, goes all over the winter? Yeah, so when you walk back there, you were like directly behind the market basket plaza. You went over like a little hump and then kind of down into a hollow and it opens up and there's probably one big tent. There's one, you can, there's like a very easy footpath to fall over. <coughs> one yeah. big tent over here with a nice shelter. Yeah. You know, thing of pallets over here, a ton of trash over here. Yeah. And then further down there was several tents set up. I want to say it was last summer that we were out there. Uh, so the, the gentleman who owns the big tent has actually lived out there for five or six years. Wow. Um, so uh, the other issue that we have out there is that that's very close to the Sarsworth Rollinsford line. Yep. Um, so there is property that the town of Rollinsford owns that is within the city of Sarsworth that is in that area. And then there is property that is within say there in the town of Rollinsburg, that the town also owns, um, and then their property that somebody else owns that's within the city of Summersworth, so um, it's a little complicated jurisdictionally because as far as our police department goes, the people that are on the town of Rollinsburg land, but within the city of Summersworth, we don't really have jurisdiction over that issue, if that makes sense. No. <laughs> so you're saying that they're on Rollinsford town land, but owned by in Somersworth? Owned by Rollinsford, but in Summersworth. Okay. So if you're in Summersworth, you need Summersworth PD, well, even though it's owned by Rollinsford. Um, I, I get that, but how do you uh, differentiate the jurisdiction there? Uh, I'm not going to say it's an approximation, because it's more than that, but uh, GPS combined with um, online tax mapping software that um, SRPC has online, um, which actually seems to provide a pretty uh, reliable boundary line we compare it to the data taken from the tax maps and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, so hypothetically speaking, if Kelly drives in Rollinsford. Yes, mostly. Uh, and this is totally hypothetical, mostly. Yep. If there was a rash of break in, say, yep. and it was contributed to the homeless area, yep. who would have jurisdiction? Who would be called with Rollinsford or something? Uh, so if that were to happen, yep. um, we would, uh, our police department would probably take the lead on investigating if yep. the break-ins occurred uh, or thefts or whatever crime it was occurred at properties that were on Cullen Drive in the boundaries of Rollinsburg. Um And then wherever that took us, if it took us to somebody's tent, let's say, that was over on the Summer Tour side, huh. we would liaise with Summer Tour PD with a great relationship with them. Uh, we talked to the detectives and we would figure out how to make that happen. That's not very difficult. Sure. Um, the more difficult issue when it comes to homelessness and you know, people living in tents back there is you know, the town has a little property owner. Do they want to try and move those people somewhere else? Do they not? What happens to them? Uh, because, you know. Yeah. Well, so Claudia did mention that there is an effort um, an alliance between Dover and Summersworth right now to try to provide services for some of those people. Although I'm sure there are people who don't want services. Yeah. Um, and you know, and there's an example of that in South Berwick, um, you know, the guy living in the tent um, you know, year round. Um, but so I just have to ask this question. If this was happening down 
at um, a town by the gazebo, for mm -hmm. example, would it be acceptable? Uh, or would somebody like complain and would it be handled? So just because it's out of sight, right. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking that we shouldn't ignore it because it's out of sight. So. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to say that is there something where it happened? Mm -hmm. It's very obvious. That's a situation that you can right. address before it becomes much larger. Yeah. Uh, once you have a larger issue where somebody is completely living there, yeah. you, you run into some other issues than just, hey, you can't hang out here overnight. You guys don't want to come. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely, um, maybe we need to have a discussion with some of the other communities that are doing something. Um, and also, so my other thing, I was going to go out this weekend because yep. one of the residents invited me to come and look out their back door to see what they saw. So um, it's right there, okay, I'm sure it's late. It's yeah, visible away from the backyard. It is. Yes, okay. Um, and so I think probably that kind of assessment needs to happen. And maybe it's a matter of asking them to move where they're not in a line of sight of the residents. Um, as long as there are no issues with the police department. Um, it, yeah, so as far as Issues beyond uh, them being there. Yeah. The issues, criminal issues surrounding them. Uh, the town's property isn't posted. So they're not trespassing until the town yeah. says we don't want them there, you need to leave. So um, it's not, there's nothing criminal occurring as far as currently them getting their tents there. Right. Because the town is yet to say. And, and I think that the issue is. You can try to have a conversation about could you live 200 yards that way, um, but I think that would be really difficult to enforce because it's public land. So you're going to either evict them or you're going to allow them. But if they wanted to challenge having to move, then it would come back to are you going to evict them or allow them? But I'm not sure if you can, unless you're going to, you know, I think there are just legalities around, unless you're going to officially designate an area as an official encampment and encourage it in one area. But I would just encourage you to consider an attorney before you say, before you try to um, enforce the idea of it's okay over here and not over there. So, so the only step really this town would take is we as a board could um, um, post it as no trespassing. They are the people. I, I it's, place, it's, it's posted, sorry to interrupt you, but when it's posted, it's not posted sufficient to statute of how you post property right. uh, for no trespassing. So I, I don't know what it's been in the past, but and as far as the legalities of where and how the town will go about that, that's kind of over our <laughs> okay. department. It certainly help you with the criminal aspect and, right. and that stuff. But I would encourage you to talk to the Municipal Association generally around what are the implications about posting it because it is public land. Well, so I'm going to circle back to the original question. What if it were right in town here? What would we do then? So, so I think that you can, as, as he said, you can say move along if you, you know, yeah, if, it's, if it's a very temporary situation. So Bicentennial Park is also posted, but you can't um, be in the park. Yeah, yeah, dusk and dawn. You can do that. That's big, and big sign already going. For some yeah. reason, nobody ever sees it. Um, but <laughs> quite frequently, we find people back there in bars, doing whatever. Um, That's probably the easiest thing to do. If you, yeah. Well, I think I, I'd like to personally just go and kind of assess it from a yep. resident's perspective, yeah. and then maybe circle back. I only and then John can be here instead of you. Yeah. I only do it from coming back from from market basket. Yeah. And honestly. I went down a little bit for some pictures, but I didn't want to like entice someone from out the yard, you know, taking pictures of the site. So I didn't go very far. Right. Um, okay. The only thing I'm curious about, and I'm not sure who we get in contact, is what Dover and some of these like maybe looking at for assistance for these people. And, you know, I'd just be curious if, if they've already been offered assistance and they're not interested in it. Um, so, you have somebody in the waiting room. It, it would start, so, so there are three different contacts I would give you. So Dover and Somersworth are talking about this for sure, but it, I would also include Rochester because they have the Tri-City 
coalition against homelessness with all of the mayors, and now Dover has the temporary shelter that's located in Summersworth behind Target, um, but that's a night shelter only. It's not a day shelter, so the regular shelters are full. So, you know, this is, this is a really complicated problem with no easy solution. There isn't a place for these people to go, which is why different communities keep evicting them, and it's a little bit it's a very unfortunate whack-a-mole because you, you evict them from one place, they disperse to another, and then they come back, or some other group comes back. So um, I, I don't know if there's something new that they have in mind. It's typically over what to do in, um, in the coldest weather months. Um, so Community Action has somebody um, who um, is the liaison for homelessness. So they would be very familiar with whatever conversations are going on regionally around homelessness um, and any, um, they, they know the individuals and know, would know who's out there and, and who's been offered help and who doesn't want it and, um, they can't disclose that though. Um, no, but they can tell you who your residents would be considered in as much as they know what the city and town lines are, which is, and they can tell you a bit about their situations if you're asking from a welfare perspective because ultimately if you remove these people and there isn't room in shelters, which is likely the case, then you could be responsible for paying for motels right. for yeah. them. Right, they're going to enter welfare, right. Okay, yeah. well, let's so. take a look first. Let's yeah. take a look. And yeah, it's, it's, you know, some of them are living in six years. To them, to them themselves, that's the problem. He is that specific person really doesn't have any interest in it. Mm -hmm. So you, you talk about people who don't want help. Right. He just wants to be left alone. Right. Okay. My my conversation with the chief was was that there are people such as that one who are very good and they're very settled and they just want a peaceful place to be. And then there are more transient people who come and go and are more likely to cause trouble. So they're all not just one group or one type of people. There are people who have been there for a long time who really aren't causing problems, and then except by their presence, um, and I don't know whether that's um, a very visible presence or not, but then there are other people who are more likely to leave trash and um, be making noise and disturbing the peace more. Okay. So I think we'll kind of table this discussion until we get a little more information. The only, the only other question I have is, is if we know of any other settlements in the town of Lawrence like this? Um, not that we are aware of. <laughs> no, I know. Like, there could be, who knows, in Scotland, there could be. There could be somebody living in a tent in Scotland that is pretty well traveled. Yeah. Um, I, 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 just would, I would imagine we would have heard about that. Yeah. Um, so that's really the only area that we're aware of that has that kind of concentration, if you will. I think that's all we put on. There was an area of line, like call road, and like, oh, okay. anybody who was right there would have gone flooded away. So I know what you're talking about. Yep. Uh, there is that area. Um, we check on that area regularly. There's somebody out there now. Um, there was somebody up there. There no longer. Okay. Um, property owners made it clear to us that he doesn't want to be back there. <laughs> But I, I will say that you would like to take a trip out there and go deeper, and we'd be happy to organize like a field trip, if you will. Yeah, no, uh, that, that may be, it may be in the cards. Uh, so you mean it, Cullen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I wouldn't mind doing that. So if you, if you, I mean, if you want to get your own perspective without the police department there, because you think you might see something different than if we were with you. Let me means. start with the resident that um, invited me to come look yeah. from her backyard and then, and then go from there. Because we will be headed out there at some point in the near future just to kind of take over your inventory of what's changed since the last time we were out there. Uh, okay. So, Great. you all have come along. Perfect. More than that, didn't there. Thanks, Will. Well, that's all I have. I'll see you guys today. Thank you, Will. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Thank you. All right, so you have to fly See those windows? I didn't, but George told me. Thank so, you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So the, the budget that you said, that's our final draft for now for us to start planning for workshops. Unless you make any changes, you know, in this meeting or, or something like that, okay. yes, that's your working draft. Okay. So if you want to be in charge of the, the one official copy now, um, or I can manage it and then give it to you next week or um, something. Well, I don't know what changes. Okay, I think is recreation now in there in cemetery as well. Yes. Okay. So because I think those the last group they, they sign, came just okay, at the good. last meeting. Yes. So they're in there. Um, I would just um, bring to your attention that there are different tabs in that worksheet, um, and so um, share it as a PDF. But if you're gonna um, share it if, if somebody really wants a worksheet version of it then um lots of caution because there's health insurance information about who's on which plan um on, on one of the tabs to mm -hmm. help as a calculator which informs the first sheet okay. so so just I watch for that. formulas because i didn't use a lot this term um but you could use it in such a way that you put um the number of elections and it auto fills everything just multiplies by the number of elections so it can work better than it's working this year um, but the health insurance is still set up that way so that when you know what happens with health insurance what percentage increase to expect you can apply that on that tab and it will update the first sheet okay yep. the ranges use the ranges um not ranges it's um you know single fi single person costs so single person is 100% covered and it costs whatever it costs and then um, two person is 85% covered by the town. Um, so, so it has how many people on each plan and then a family is 80%. So it's broken down on... Oh yes, I did see yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so so you can apply, you know, the 6% increase or the whatever percent increase. Um, or, or you can actually change the rates to what the rates are actually going to be because you'll know. And then it will do that calculation for you. Either way, um, whatever that final amount is will auto-update in the first sheet. Okay. So uh, do we have all of that information now? Is it all pre-settled, the rates and... No, not at all. Okay, and so that's very complicated about trying to decide the budget so early is that... Um, you could be surprised by a $30,000 increase in health insurance mm -hmm. at the last minute after you think you know what you're doing with all the departments and you have it all settled and then wham, you're, you're getting hit with a huge insurance increase. Um, hopefully not, but that's something to look out for. So you still don't know... When do we get them? Yeah, October, we... like late October, mid to really? late October. And do we have to request them or are they automatically? They're automatically sent. Chuck will be aware of it when it happens. Okay. Um, right. So, so health insurance, um, life, disability insurance, um, property, um, unemployment, all of the insurances are up in the air. Um, to a lesser impact, we still don't know what Stratford Regional Planning and the Municipal Association are going to charge us for next year. Um, those, those will go up, but it will be very small as an order of magnitude compared to health insurance is the one that, that's um, the really the, the real concern because that's going to be significant. Okay. So health, life, disability, and what else is um Stratton Regional Planning and the Municipal Association, property liability, um, I mean, unemployment and um oh, and workers comp. Okay. okay. So late October, mid to late October, um, hopefully sooner, but plan on that anyway. Okay. So, so you might just kind of, what I would suggest you do is just decide that you think that health insurance is going to be, let's say, a 5% increase or an 8% increase or have hypothetical conversations around, I'd be in favor of doing this as long as health insurance doesn't go over above 5%, but I don't want to go, I, want, I don't want to do any more than this if, if health insurance climbs over 8% or something like that, just to, just so that you're not starting from scratch and completely cut off the knees when you get that news. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, well, that, that's going to be the last thing I would have to budget. Yeah. 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 
So do we want to try to put um, at least one workshop date on the calendar? Um, so we have to have this done. Well, the budget committee wants to find out. One the first budget committee, right? They want the, yes, the end of the month is um, budget committee. They're really looking for CIP and highway, but if you aren't ready with CIP and highway, you can start with something else. I would just caution you to have a pretty good idea of what you're doing about everything because if you know everything affects everything else. Right, right. Um, so, um, the week, so I really feel like next week, we're probably going to be here on Monday. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a hiring meeting on Wednesday, and it would um, be nice to figure out a date for um, the select board vacancy. So I'm thinking like the, are we going to have 20th week or market workshop? Do you have Um, how do we say really? I wasn't aware that's happening. So can you send me an email so that gets posted? Yeah. It's not posted. Oh, okay. Um, Mike sent, oh, do you get that? I didn't get that. Okay. Yeah, it's on um, the 15th at 6. So like when we where is the seventh day? Um uh, well I guess it kind of depends if we're going to do a regular do another Monday meeting for the select board. Um, so the twentieth you're back on an every other week schedule. So the thirteenth is an off on Monday, that's an off week okay. meeting. So then 20 if you're back, and, and you, by all means you can switch what every other week means, and you know. Oh, we do that. If we feel like we can get back to every other week, that we, we can use that Monday for a budget workshop. 13 to 20. Um, well, so we're, um, so Caroline said that the regular weekly meeting was the 20th. 13. Um, but we can switch the week, so we can make the next week 13, a regular weekly meeting. We change our schedule. And in the in the twenty thirty bucket would just be strictly budget. Right? I'm fine with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm good actually. Okay. Um next week's just a little bit. It's like one business meeting, so to speak. So so next Monday would be the thirteenth would be a regular select board meeting. And then the twentieth will be the budget workshop. Yep. Both Mondays when I mean, right? we're talking about the Okay, so everything tomorrow night and Monday night is posted for 6, and then on the 20th, we're going back to 6.30, is that correct? Either one works fine for me, so. Um, on the 13th, you mean? The 13th is scheduled for 6, but then the 20th is 6.30. What's well, a budget workshop? Um, we probably, wait, I can do 6. Do you, want to do, do, do you want to just make meetings six going forward, um, or or you, do you just want to put that on the twentieth, make the twentieth six? I think um, I, my my schedule was set up enough now that I could probably do six, so I'm fine with that. Six is good. Okay, correct. Right. CIP budget for a moment on the agenda. I'm not sure that answer. Uh, I'm just kind of curious when we're going to see it. But, um, well, that, that kind of, de you know, it, it, it kind of depends on the board. So the CIP committee is delayed because the spreadsheet is complicated and we have two new members on that board, um, a new chair who's trying to manage the really complicated spreadsheet that's new to him. So, um, they have their recommendations kind of sort of figured out, but they need one more meeting to do that. So they're going to meet sometime next week, which I think is going to have to be Thursday since that's now the only available um, meeting. Um, it also depends on, on the board though. So um, we, we lost Kevin Haynes very unfortunately, and he served on that committee. Um, later on the agenda is, is the planning board appointment. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin Haynes served on the CIP committee in the capacity of planning board ex officio, representing the planning board on CIP. So um, it depends on how you handle that appointment. And, and if you want to post that and see if volunteers are open for that, that's going to take longer. And then maybe you're going to have the two 
commute, people do the best they can to come up with a recommendation for the board. How, with that. how many people on the planning board? There are five full members and two alternates. Um, and how about CIP? CIP is um, myself, a select board ex officio, and then a rep from planning and a rep from budget committee, um, and somebody from school, so five. So with me leaving, you're down to two. Um, I'm sorry, so, so for CFP, there's you. And, and, and there's a select board ex officio, which was Miles, so that's yes. now vacant. We, we lost Kevin, so now you just have school and budget representatives. And those people are, are the newer members. Yep. So, and what are they meeting again? They were going to meet tonight in another room, which got delayed because of the loss of Mr. Haynes, and to see what the board does with that appointment. Because um, Miles England, should you choose to appoint him to the planning board, he has volunteered to step into that role. He used to chair the planning board for a number of years, and he served on the CIP also for a number of years and was on that board prior to his resignation from the select board. Um, that would allow both the planning board and CIP to have, you know, restore some experience and expertise that's, thought that's missing now. Um, and then, you know, that would help the, the CIP committee come to a resolution sooner, I think. But, um, I understand if you want to post it, in which case um, then the new person on the planning board would have to meet with the planning board. They typically only meet once a month. I don't know if I could get them to meet again. And then you're waiting for that, you know, them to figure out who's going to serve on CIP. So, so um, it's further out. So the, there's not a planning board actually, um, a, a member that sits on CIP though, right? There is, and that was going to Okay, so he filled both those, okay. Um, so I would be willing um, to at least temporarily fill this lot of the economic for the CIP, um, since um, I mean that's probably one of the more important things happening right now. You mean you want to fill it? Yeah, I would do that. Well, okay. so is the select board ex mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's just you know making sure. Of with all these meetings so that they can, you know, fit into their schedule as well. Um, the only other thing I'd say about it is that when you have, when you appoint a new select board member, you should do all of your ex officio yes. yeah. votes and all that again. Agreed. I agree. Um, um, yeah, because I think that, so also planning more and I know that's still open, um, so I think you need to address those two. And budget. Budget. Yeah. Um, so, we're so, so we don't know when we're going to see a SIP proposal. <laughs> That's what we were originally I, I would I would hope that you can see it by the end of the next week, okay. assuming that that group can meet and come to a determination, which mm -hmm. I think is reasonable to expect. But it you know, um, but they're really challenged by the complexity of of that spreadsheet um, and, and some of the intricacies of it and, and being new. So, you know, I, I don't want to, I would hope that's true, I can't guarantee it, but one more meeting should, should do it. The other thing to know though is that CIP has been a process that typically is maybe four meetings, for, you know, in July and August, and then it goes away for a year, mm -hmm. and it comes back in July and August, and we've been discussing the benefit of keeping the group going to, um, so that they can stay up to date with um, reaching out to department heads about do you have a quote yet for whatever project that is scheduled out in year three, um, following up with what's the lifespan of some of these projects that's on your list, getting a, you know, it's, um, that time frame is very condensed to try to keep everything up to date. Um, also, to update, keep the spreadsheet up to date. Given, you know, did the, did the select board make, um, take the recommendation and put those items on the warrant or not? Did they pass or not? Um, did they spend all of that money for that project or not? Um, that would help them keep the spreadsheet up to date 
and know what's going on so that when it comes July again, they can hit the ground running. So it depends on who the membership, you know, the availability of the membership at the time, whether they do that, but I think there's a benefit to that if they do. Okay. Well, I think, um, well, hopefully the goal is that we, you know, get to have a meeting and we have something to see next week. Okay. All right, so we with that. Um, so um, could we have a motion um, yes. for C um, for Ken to be the exhibition on CIP? I'll make the motion for Ken to be the exhibition on CIP. Second. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess I have to vote for myself. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. Okay. Because we're going for those. Uh, still, we got planning board appointment. Uh, well, so we have to select board approval. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. So, um, do we want to pick a date for that? Yeah. I hate to say it, but sooner or later, I don't okay. know. If we could throw in the uh, right before Monday's meeting, right after Monday's meeting at 13. Um, well, no, probably not before. So Monday's already at 6 o'clock, but you can start it with interviews and then just hit the regular agenda when you're done with that. I didn't want to do a three hour before our meeting, personally, and that's why I said that we should have very targeted meetings. Yeah, that's fine. So I was thinking, like, if we could do one hour meeting, can you do Tuesday? So well, technically I can, but we got school on it too, so. Oh, you do? Okay. What time's school on it? Six. You don't know when that's until? We could make it an hour and do so. Um, or Thursday. Thursday is the only available slot next week, so CIT. Oh, okay. CIP's next week. Well, although, so, so, and that's okay that CIP can meet in another room, but if you're going to be on CIP, right. you can't be in two places. Right, right. Um, I mean, we could, so what, you're six to seven or something? Or, but we, is it really? Well, it could be longer, if we're short, but we could, yeah. we could, you know, I could get an hour to get done and then go. Could you do both? Could you do five to six? As long, as long as it's not too early. Yeah, I, so I, I think we've got two people who work during the day, okay. so I think that might be challenging for them, but I can check. 5.30 to 6.30. I think that's likely like to be a catch-up. Interviews at 5.30 or stormwater at 5.30? 5.30 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. Okay. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'll be here. And I can just have all this stormwater. And being time box at one hour. Yeah. So you can get to meeting. Well, it should, there's five, five people. You so know, you know, about ten minutes each. Yeah. Actually, so you might be on time. I will. Okay. So we should probably like we should each of us would come up with maybe like three to five questions, and then we'll we'll sit down and maybe out of those three to five we come up with pick like three that we okay. you know how's that sound? Yeah. All right. I think the keynote should all be asked the same questions, mm -hmm. and they can yeah. relate their experience and why they want to learn. Sure. That's perfect. Well, I, I personally am more focused on experience um, than, I mean, they gave their letters of interest, yeah. so I think we understand why they're interested in running, I think. I want to know more about their experience That's fine. personally. Yeah, that's good. I just want to know about a little bit about their, I guess, their agenda, why they want to run, too. So 5.30. Thursday. I, I thought that was Tuesday. The 21st. I'm sorry. Tuesday. Oh, you're doing this on the 21st? Not 14th, sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so this is Tuesday. 9-14 at 5-30. Yes. I'm not trying to confuse you, so maybe we're just, okay, right. we're just doing it. <coughs> okay, great. And hopefully we'll make a decision that night. Yeah. 
But that night, if not that night, then it'll be the following meeting if we have to digest. And sure. We're not, okay. We're so not. just remember that on the 29th, Wednesday the 29th, which is three weeks from tonight, you need to have voted for a select board ex officio to budget, and that person needs to be available to go to that meeting. True. Okay. Yep. Or, or in theory, one of us could fill in as ex officio, right? I, I suppose, but then you've got kind of some continuity issues of not knowing what happened at the previous meeting, and also, you know, not knowing what the other person presented or how they said whatever they said around presenting those budgets. So, you know, if you all are comfortable with that, that that's certainly fine. <clears throat> okay. Planning board appointing. Um, so I I understand that I, I I don't know how I feel about it because you know we we talked about more consistency in process and I mentioned this to you um, you know trying to get um, gauge public interest instead of just appointing people without um, hearing who might be interested. Uh, you know, there, there are people that are maybe interested in being on, like, capital improvement that won't have that opportunity, for example. If, I mean, if Miles is on the planning board and he automatically becomes the CIP person, so I propose that, you know, we um, put a letter of public interest in the same way we did for um, town clerk, select board, um, to see who's interested in the position. And, and I have to say that I think it's a good precedent to set. Um, because there's been a number of ways of filling vacancies um, in the past. You know, we've gone back to the ballot, and then that changed, and then it's public interest, and that changed. And when that changed back to letters of interest, people said, well, then we should go back to the ballot. So I feel like we need to have some sort of consistent process. Um, that's my opinion. I don't disagree with you. The only thing is, in this particular circumstance, and I know I don't want to rush the judgment like we talked about, I mean, Miles does have an extremely good knowledge of the town and the operations, and he can jump right in full peak. That's the only way. That's how I look at it. Where if you're getting a new person involved, I mean, it, I agree we should do it fairly, but I'm just saying Miles could jump right in and do the job where someone else may not be able to. So. Um, I, I do understand that perspective. Um, I don't know that I necessarily agree. Agree with it because I don't think it, it's a fair opportunity for everybody. Well, um, I mean, we could if we that. do that, then we should do it relatively quickly, though. Yeah. We should like get the notice out, have it posted, yeah. you know, and hopefully Miles will still be interested and then talk to the people and, and pick well, up the person. That we, I mean, we, we could definitely shorten the window, um, to say, you know, within, you know, say by Friday, say if an email goes out by, oh no, today's Wednesday, um, by Monday. It feels like Monday, know. Yeah. yeah. So, so you want to post it and put a, d a deadline of Monday for, for interest? I mean, then I think it's fair, and it's a short window. Um, but I just feel like we could have done the same thing. We could have just a appointed somebody as a select board member, but we you know, wanted to try to do the right thing and see who's really interested. Right. Um, so that's my position, but um, I I'm okay with it because I want fair and transparent. Yeah. I just, I'm just going to express that. Make it short. That Miles. I shouldn't say this because it could be somebody else that comes in could blow us away, but in my opinion, Miles would be probably the candidate we're going to pick anyway because of his experience, but if we want to go through the process and make it fair, I agree. I'm just, just throwing that out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so if, um, if we close the window by Monday, um, and I would say 4.30 Monday, so that way Monday night when you're meeting, you know who your choices are in case you, uh, you know, want to Let's make it 4 o'clock. That way we have two hours to look at um, whatever there is to look at. Right, exactly. I appreciate your optimism. Last time we posted it around town meeting, we got no interest in any of our board and committee okay. positions. Yeah. So then it would be, really, be a clear shot for me. Right. And it will be yeah, an easy so. decision. All right, so we have five here, so I'm going to jump to the five. Sure. Yeah. Hi, Sean. Hi. Come on up, please. Thank you. Chief Robert Perry is out of town, so he just asked that I make an appearance and see if there's anything that you guys needed from 
fire. Um, I did provide a update uh, on an email with a spreadsheet on the costs and overall proposal for you guys. I don't know if you had time to review that. I know it was no. late in the day today. Uh, oh, really? So. But we'll, we'll definitely put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Hey, my car, I'll leave my car. My email's at like 3 o'clock. Probably 5, 5.30. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, I didn't expect it. Just the chief was out of town, so we asked. No. Nope. Thanks for that. Okay. Yep. Um, Thank you. We'll an update on the alarm system, fire alarm system here. Yep. Stuff has been ordered. It's probably going to be the end of October before stuff comes in. Okay. The cabinets for the actual systems are hard to come by, so there's a delay in getting those in. You can't build the system until you have the cabinet for everything to go into. Okay. Um, so it's in progress. Burns has been made aware and ordered equipment. It's just a, a wait being now. Um, he also came and looked at the buzzing sound that was happening down in the police department. Mm -hmm. And I believe he just fixed that. Just a temporary fix. There's a component that's going bad, but it at least isn't constantly buzzing right next to the receptionist down in the police department. Do we know if the system's working correctly? So we know that the system itself will alarm. We do not know if the detectors will work or not because the detectors are defective oh. and have been recalled. So okay. you okay. Know, unfortunately, <clears throat> that was something that somehow got overlooked. The notification was made to the town several years ago mm -hmm. that those detectors were recalled and nobody saw it, did anything with it, understood what it meant, not sure. Um, but they were all all the called all the heat detectors. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I did have one question. I finally get to like really go through um, the proposal from Burns. Um, so the, the card access system and the video surveillance cameras. Yes. Are, are we doing that because there have been issues at the fire department, or what's the reason that we're putting all this security system in? So, so there have <coughs> been issues at the fire station with. Um, People doing burnouts in the front parking lot on the ramp, um, kids using the side of the fire station for games and, and whatnot, okay. which puts the time <coughs> liability. Um, so that's part of okay. you know, the overall alarm system for the town. Um, you know, and, and part of it is just to protect the town, not only from an asset standpoint, from a liability standpoint, because it is a public building. So somebody uses the fire station, comes in, slips and falls, town could potentially be liable for that mm -hmm. and right now we have no way of saying that didn't happen at town property look the pavement was dry okay. whatever we also have no way of knowing who comes and goes from the building mm -hmm. if the doors get left open any of that we have no way of, of knowing that today okay do we have um caroline do we have a similar system in town hall like do we have cameras up here as well in, in some, he, he toured the company through this building, and yes, we have cameras in some locations, um, not all of which are working properly, and the quote would include, I don't know if you want to speak to that, would include more cameras. So, so separate quote, right? So under the town warrant articles from last year, mm -hmm. town hall and, and PD was um, allocated $60,000 to upgrade the access video and telephone system here in the town hall. Right, right. Yeah. In reviewing that, um, initially the quote came in for, um, was just done by one company. Accutel. Right. Accutel mm -hmm. for a phone system and um, you know, access control and, and cameras. Yep. Um, not a lot is known about that because the prior police chief did that. Okay. I actually have that proposal. John gave it to me. Okay. Um, so I do have that. So, uh, you know, it's something I'm happy to look at yeah. um, with my background. Um, when Burns was here doing the fire alarm system, they also looked at the overall access and camera system. Okay. Part of the current police chief's discussion during the walkthrough is there's a lot of areas that are not Right. currently covered by cameras that should be. Yeah, he did show me the current cameras and the resolution and the, the range. So. 
Yeah. So um, the quilt came in much more expensive, but it's not a apples to apples quilt because I think we added at least six additional cameras, probably even more than that. The cameras are a much higher quality and a higher capability than the ones that were quoted by Accutel. Um, and we added access control to more doors. That's something that the town can decide to do or not do. Okay. Yeah. For instance, right now in the offices here in you know, the, the regular town hall part of the building, mm -hmm. there's one access control door that was to the former select board's office. None of the other offices have access control into them. It's all controlled by key. So once again, somebody could go into that office that has a key, there's no record of that, there's no anything. Is it needed? That, that's something for you guys to decide. Okay. I would say maybe the place that makes the most sense is on the front door. Uh, right now, the front door has no access control on it. It's by key. Yep. And as there's different turnover, different people have keys, it's a major access point coming in and out of the, the building, so that may be something that the select board wants to look at, adding access control to, so that you can you know, see who's coming and going from town hall when. Right. Um, okay. Um, have you heard of a company out of Portland called Costas? I have not. Okay. Because um, I know some of the local businesses um, are using them for security systems as well. Um, and I, you know, just in like private discussions with some of these businesses, um, their pricing was really pretty competitive. Um, uh, so, um, one person I know in particular, um, they had sold eight cameras for $2,000. So, not having seen it, mm -hmm. but understanding the industry, most of those cameras were poured up into the cloud. Okay. Yeah. The problem with that for the police department is Privacy. it has to stay on-prem. Yeah. The other problem is is that most of those cameras are manufactured in China. Okay. The federal government says any camera that is manufactured in China cannot be installed in a federal facility. Okay. Police department technically is not a federal facility, but they do need to meet CGIS requirements. Mm -hmm. So it's something we have to check and make sure uh, and if you had any grants or anything that you wanted to apply for, even down the road for storage or whatever, mm -hmm. you would automatically not be eligible. Um, because, because of federal funding. Federal funding. So if it doesn't federal. meet federal standards. Yes. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. For security. Okay. Okay. So. So we'd, we'd need to investigate. Yes. Okay. It, it's, um, there was one of the three quotes that I sent you, mm -hmm. was a cloud quote, quote like that. Yeah. You know, it can become very easy to bypass that security, right? Because all I need to do is take down internet access to the building, mm -hmm. and now none of your security cameras work. Right. right. For the police department, when they could have a suspect in custody, mm -hmm. the, the risk of doing that it okay. is probably not worth the savings on the other end. Yeah. No, I can see that perspective. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll ask more questions. Yeah, right. and like I said, I'm, I'm happy to, yeah. to help. Don't do anything. Let me, let me try to find out more yep. from, um, from some of these business owners to see if it's cloud-based, and that, obviously that's a problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you. There's um, heating, P. Gagnon, on the agenda. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm going to guess that Sean's probably the person for whatever question that was. Uh, well, Sean and I actually um, shared an email. Um, so P. Gagnon is putting together a proposal, a service contract, and a service contract for our systems. Uh, we're just waiting for Dan. Dan, is that his name? No, not Dan. Um, to get back. That P. Gagnon. Mike. Mike. Mike I think Dan was one of the guys there. So. Dan is, yeah. yeah. So Dan is the service manager, yep. and um, Mike is the, the actual sales guy yeah. that, that puts all the proposals together. Yeah. So Sean and I both had contact with them. So. Okay. I We're contacted just him after you had said they didn't have the right information to yeah. make sure that the, <laughs> the right information got back to you. Uh, well, I told him Sean said this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So hopefully good. that's all good. Anything else? Do you have any questions? Nope. Like I said, the, the 
you know, Tokyo's, um, you have that proposal, okay. um, to go you know, that. everything else is in the works, uh, rope block, which you approved the PO for a couple of weeks ago, will probably be out next week to install the new hardware on the doors. Okay. Good. Yeah. We can bypass that issue. Thank you, Sean. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to jump into it. Um, do you, you want to talk about the parking ordinance? Okay. Are you, are you ready to talk yeah, about it? I am. So, I'll give my opinion real quick. Um, I personally think that we didn't have all the residents involved in the original subcourt made the judgment on it. Um, I'm personally in favor of the original ordinance. That's my personal opinion. I don't know. Um, which was this, but that's what I'm saying. So um, just as a point of order, the yep. public hearing proposed the change of adding those addresses as areas to park car compact cars. Mm -hmm. So that is the only change you can make at this point. So if you want to go back to the way it was, you need to have a public hearing and say, we're proposing that we go back to the way it was. Because So a public hearing is for hearing from the public but you're hearing from the public about a given topic. And the topic you presented to hear about was adding parking at just those locations. So if, if you feel like you, know, you, you have a sense of... The of the body? Uh, you, you <laughs> know, well, you know, w would you have had different participants or would they have said something different? Um, it, it's just a little bit of a liability to present one thing and then make a different change. Not that you can't, but... Um, but I, I don't think that the, the, um, the way it was described um, said specifically that that's all we were proposing. Well, so that's what the posting was, mm -hmm. was that, you know, that red line version said to allow compact cars to park at these street addresses. That's what the posting said. Um, I, I want to bring that up because I, I didn't think that we were very that specific about it. Yes, and so me, and we mailed that to oh, those yes. residents, and it was even in color with red yeah. at those addresses. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's your comfort zone. You get to make that decision. I just want you to know that there is a bit of, you know, um, a bit of a legal liability if somebody's going to complain. Um, uh, you, you can decide that's not likely or, or that you're willing to take that chance, but, but the point of a public hearing is to present the change you're proposing, hear how people feel about the change you're proposing, and make that decision. So, you know, consult an attorney or decide that it doesn't matter and you think it's fine, but I just, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So that was um, a town email or... It went out it, by, it was a posting. Okay. Um, so it was a regular posting that went out via mail to the affected addresses, like everybody on Main Street, yeah. and then it was also posted locally here in the post office. So it should be in the drive, right? No, no, we don't keep them. And then, it, and then it's on the, the website. Web, though? Hmm? On the town website? If you go, like, but you have to go down, like, pages and pages because yes. it was a while ago. Yeah. But um, it, it would be there. I, I, I just have to say that. Um, that I've been to a number of public hearings um, over the years, and regardless of how it's kind of worded, and I understand, you know, that it, people might not be properly informed, but at, at the end you walk away with, you know, the consensus of the public, and you, that's what you decide. You, you can decide it's close enough that it's not really a problem. I, I just want to bring mm -hmm. it to your attention. I, I'm, it, it, you know, it's fine with me, whatever you want to do with that. It's just my job to bring it to your attention. Mm -hmm. I just want to read the posting, though. So you're saying it is in... So if you go, to, if you scroll down and look at news, mm -hmm. don't go anywhere, but just scroll down. Oh, okay. Um, to go like up a little bit, um, you see those right be right above town hall business procedures. Oh yes. Go to news, mm -hmm. and then those are in order, and you have to see more news mm -hmm. and just keep going back and back and back. And there's not another okay. easier way to find it. You just got to go back and tell oh, us the mm -hmm. So there's that.
Okay, yep, now I see what you're saying. So, do you want me to read that for you, Paul? Yes, please. Um, the select board will be holding a public hearing to hear from residents about a proposed change to Ordinance 75 01 regulating parking, regulating, regulating parking. Section 3 describing the no parking area on Main Street would be changed to include the additional language noted in red. From Front Street to a point 15 degrees, 15 feet west of Prospect Street intersection, except that compact cars may park directly in front of 619, 621, 629, and 631 Main Street. A compact car is defined as a vehicle that fits between the road and the sidewalk such that it is parked entirely off the road without touching the sidewalk. And the public hearing is at Town Hall on Tuesday, the 24th, 6.30 p.m. Those are who are unable to attend are welcome to submit comments in writing to Town Hall via email. So a date for that. Um, I don't think it's going to happen in September. I, I and are we mailing all those addresses again? So, so to, you know, that started because the very first public hearing. Um, it wasn't. Um, we didn't mail them, and we're not required to mail them. Mm -hmm. um, but they complained that they were affected and not aware. So um, they would certainly prefer mail, but that's up to you. Um, How many residents is there? I want to see about, yeah, I want to guess about a thousand, but. So, yeah, probably a dozen. I would just say no, and I would hand it to know this. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we need a motion to um, propose public hearing, or? I think that's helpful. Okay. Um, so we need to think of a, I'm saying maybe the first week of October. And, and so you're going to present, so, so what you're presenting is to completely reverse the last action so that parking is allowed entirely between Foundry and Prospect. So really Except for that one sign, it's still originally there. That's X amount from there's one house they can't. That right corner. On but that's always been that way, yeah. Okay. Um, so we have um, on so the thirteenth becomes our regular meeting schedule again. That means that it's a, that Monday the 4th of October is a non-regular meeting. We could do a public hearing on that Monday the 4th. Good. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make a motion that we um, schedule a public hearing on October 4th at 6 o'clock p.m. to reverse the changes um, recently implemented for Ordinance 75-01. That's sufficient. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So tomorrow we're meeting at nine, at, excuse me, six o'clock for town administration, excuse me, town administrative vacancy transition. Yep. And it's gonna be us three and Chuck. Yes. Is that the whole some of it? Um, well, it, it is open to public, um, but we're not taking, I don't, I propose we don't take public input, because really I asked to have this more of a question and answer with Carolyn, mm -hmm. to kind of go through her list, um, so we can better understand her projects and what we need to do. What to loose ends we can pick up and what we can assign to who, who right. we have, what, or what business we got to take care of. And yeah. yeah, I agree. So, so hopefully it's an hour, I'd like to target it for an hour. Um, and it would be it would be good to have Chuck. Um, and he's he planning on he's available. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Great. Okay. So is there any 
facility director and facility status update, there's, there's no really. There's a purchase order in the board folder for the Martell plumbing quote that I forwarded along with the Martell plumbing quote for the Martell plumbing quote that I forwarded along with the board to replace all the plus valves and some other parts, which um, does address all the remaining toilets and urinals upstairs and downstairs. Okay. okay. So, did you speak right now about whether they did like a complete assessment of our plumbing needs? That is my understanding. Okay. But I didn't do the walkthrough with that, but that's that's my understanding is that he went through everything to decide um, what parts would be out of date and should be replaced. Okay, great. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and so, as I mentioned, um, so I did have a conversation with Mike at Pedagian about an annual or semi annual service contract for our Perfect. cleaning system. Yes. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say is that. The air. The Agnes doesn't do the air. Town said said they would only do it if we were a customer of theirs. Um, so we would probably. When's the last time that system was serviced? I mean, we're getting ready to kind of shut down. I can't even oh, no. tell you. I think it's it's more about um, somebody came in. I think it was. I think it was. Uh, is this forced hot air or is it? Um, what is? The, the system, the heating system yeah. is, um, yeah, it's, it's forced hot air. Okay. Um, so I, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about AC here. I am talking about AC. All right, I okay. want to make sure I, that they were different. <coughs> two different systems. They are two different systems, yeah. same ducts. Okay. Um, same ducts. Okay. The AC leaked in the ladies' room, and that's just kind of been sort of hobbling along. Mm -hmm. um, those. I believe we have five compressors, and two of them um, were replaced within the last maybe three to five years or something like that. The remaining three are really old, and they're on the CIP fully funded for next year. So okay. that's just something to know for this conversation is that I anticipate the CIP committee is going to recommend <coughs> buying new air compressors for the remaining ACs in this building, which will it doesn't help the ongoing maintenance, cleaning, filter, Problem, but should at least take care of the fear of more breakdowns and leaks. I mean, so whoever does that for us could then, then maybe service. that. So, so I'm, I'm proposing that you wait and see who you're going to contract that with, if and do okay. you do that, and then contract with that person after the new system is installed. Sure, that makes sense. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, did you all want to do the plumbing um, PO? Yeah. yeah. That that's in the board folder to your left, Paul. Yeah, in there. All right, so, I have P PO number 2047 for Bartel Plumbing for about $3,320. I'll make a motion. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. So um, the um, the janitor brought to your attention that there may be structural issues. Yeah. We had a friend who is an engineer look at that and recommend having an engineer address it. Um, Tom Clark, the building inspector, concurred, and so I got our town engineer to send somebody from their firm to go evaluate it when the columns are missing. Um, I've not heard back about a scope of what that work might entail and, and a quote for that, but that's coming. I don't know if you um, want other quotes for that, if you want me to call other engineers. I don't know when to expect the columns to be replaced. And the, and the bricks are cracked, not just where the columns go, but I think there is value in seeing it when the columns are missing um, because of the cracking under where the columns go. So. Um, if you have an engine, you know, if you call another engineer, I'm not sure how much they do or don't see the same thing if the, if the columns get replaced, is what I'm saying. Um, not being an engineer, I don't know what the value is of, of seeing that. So um, I can call other engineering firms if you think, you know, that's our town engineer who we always use to represent us on town mm -hmm. issues. He's the same one who's um, going to be providing a quote for the transfer station property. What is, who, what's his name? Um, so Jay Stevens is the person we typically work with 
though he's not a structural, you know, he does our, our roads. He was the one that, that provided that Victoria Point assessment. Um, so I'm not sure who from civil consultants they're in South Borough. Um, I mean, if that's the, our regular engineering firm, I, I'm not adverse to that. Okay. Okay. No, I can't imagine. I, I guess. I guess we'll figure out what it's going to be for the cost, but I can't imagine it's going to be crazy. Everything's crazy. Yeah, I, I would go with him on that one. <laughs> Everything is crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I guess it depends. You know, if 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 there if so um, if the bricks are cracking because there's a lack of you know some kind of structural support underneath. In theory. If you listen to, you know, Joe Cowett when he lived across the street, he talked about a river coming down Prospect Street underground, like un under Main Street, rather, from Prospect, just coming downhill and under the town hall. That's what he told me one day, um, underground. Well, Joe was and there for a long time. Well, right, and so and so that's why we were having water issues downstairs, downstairs which has now been corrected. But, you know, it, it would make sense that if there's all that water going on, underneath the building that perhaps something that was secure once upon a time has been impacted by water flow. Mm -hmm. and, and then you are potentially jacking up the brickwork to pour some kind of cement foundation underneath it mm. or something. I'm not really sure, but I, I think it could get costly. Mm. So you might keep that in mind when you're considering your town hall maintenance budget for next year um, to, when you get that quote, mm -hmm. revisit that line. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's the spreadsheet right there in front of you in color. Um, this is a spreadsheet for for now that we need to report to the Department of Revenue now, um, which is now you know three quarters through the year now. What do we believe our total revenue will be that will collect in this calendar year. So that's one thing to consider when you're looking at this spreadsheet. The other is that um, it, it also, you, you see it also in the blue column, anticipated 2022. As part of the budget cycle, um, we haven't really talked about it, but the budget committee is going to want to know what you anticipate receiving for revenue in 2022 because, of course, that impacts what you um, what you might afford in your operating budget because you know a two percent increase in the operating budget right may, really might have a four percent impact if your revenue is dropping mm -hmm. right so it's all it's all contextual and it all interrelates so okay. um, so this column um, revenue year to date um, 731 anticipated 2021 this looks like not the spreadsheet that I first shared with you, but I think those numbers are um, that blue column, although it says anticipated 2022, um, those are the numbers that I um, am suggesting for revised for 21, despite oh, okay. the column header. Okay. header. So um, I have that spreadsheet, and Kim, I'll send this to you, and this is another spreadsheet that has different tabs um, that play, that correlate and feed into this this front tab sure. so for example under charges for services when you see other charges it's it's zero but it still it, it still garners questions when you have like under state sources other including railroad tax every category has an other uh, which always um, garners lots of questions but those are DRA terms this spreadsheet is set up to mimic the um, the DRA report that we have to fill out. So once you decide on these numbers, then I'm going to fill out the correlating DRA report and then let you know that that report is available for your signature, which then needs to be uploaded into the portal. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's why we've kept this spreadsheet looking exactly like it does, which correlates to that report, which is why it says some really annoying things like other. So other, when you, um, for example, mis under miscellaneous revenue, if that's not already vague enough, there's an other cat you know, category under miscellaneous revenue. 
Um, that is comprised of the cell tower lease, our hydro lease income, which is dependent upon water flow, by the way. It's not a steady amount. Um, oh, the other other? Yeah, the under miscellaneous, the other. Oh, okay. There we go. Um, Oh, yeah. Reimbursements of fees, like when somebody bounces a check and we get um, a bank fee that's reimbursed to us. So those those things are all in here, um, re, you know, reimbursements. So um, that that's what that means anyway. I just wanted to make sure that was clear to you. What was um so the high room said? So under miscellaneous revenue, other is comprised of cell tower lease payments of approximately $17,000. Hmm. Hydro lease payments of approximately $60,000. Reimbursable expenses for approximately $5,000. And then other miscellaneous revenue, other within the other within the miscellaneous. Um, and that is for um, the notice historical committee, other miscellaneous revenue. Um, it's just fees that don't fall into any other category. That's only $4,500. So, so um, that's a total of 85 for do, that. Do you have, in your spreadsheet, do you have um, like a kind of a legend um, that encapsulates? So no, you have to click on the other, the, these other tabs okay. that feed in. So, okay. gotcha. so if you're not ready to decide this tonight, I can share this spreadsheet with you, which might help you see how these numbers from other tabs feed into the front spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, I would just caution you that, um, it, yeah, timing, the, these things are all going to hold up the tax rate. And, and it's not just about when you hand it in, but it's about when they review it and they decide they have questions or agree with it or want to move things around. It's when it all gets reconciled and finalized, not really when you, you upload it. So um, the MS1 is also in the select board folder that um, the board needs to sign. That is the report of the total assessed value of the town, including how much for utilities, how much for elderly and veteran exemptions, current use, um, charitable, all those things. So, um, I'm sorry, um, elderly. So, so it's all the value of the town okay. minus what is the value of the town that is not taxable under all the categories of why they're not taxable. Okay. I think that's something that we could probably uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, sorry, I, I, trust, I, I would like to see the spreadsheet, but I trust that you know you um, have made the right adjustments. Well, so um, I, I hope that you won't trust me, and that you'll make sure that you understand, because mm -hmm. it's important that you understand where the numbers come from. Because mm -hmm. when I'm not here and you trust me, that's not going to help you mm -hmm. <laughs> as much as I appreciate that. So, um, Chuck updates the other tabs of this spreadsheet, mm -hmm. um, typically monthly, which helps to update the spreadsheet. You know, it updates the face of what you're seeing from behind mm -hmm. the scenes. Revenue, I'll warn you, is always um, at least a few weeks behind expenses because um, he has to input all that information from all the other people who deposit money to the town. So it's, it's not an instant update process. But I'll share the spreadsheet, and then as you have questions over this coming week, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, Chuck is really... And we're meeting with you on Monday again, so... I am not available Monday. Oh, okay. Um, but Chuck understands this spreadsheet. He updates it. He's looking in the accounting system. Okay. He can, you know, pull reports for any of these accounts. Sure. If you want more detail about what any of them are. Okay. Sounds good. Um, but the MS-1, I will leave on the select board's table if you're not ready to sign it tonight, and that way you can come in on your own and look it over, decide if you have any questions or don't understand it. It's created by the assessing software. It's signed by the assessor. So it just needs you to, to sign off on the data that it's representing mm -hmm. of the value in the different categories. Okay. Is that in there or no? It's in your board folder right now. But I'll put it in there. Okay. When? Just, Did, well, when do sorry. we want to sign up on the MS1 today? Or? I'm okay with it, but if, you're okay if you want to look at the numbers, it's well, okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, just a quick question, Caroline. So, the revised estimated review that you usually submit is usually what? Middle of September? 
It is technically due September 1st, as is the MS-1. Lots of documents are due. Um, when do we usually get it done by? Well, oh, like September now, we you know, so we're, we're, we're not really late, and those deadlines aren't firm. It's just that you're not going to get a tax rate without it. That's yeah, all. Yeah, so that's something that we gotta. You're not late. Just, just don't dawdle either. Right. I don't. Know? I don't. As soon as we can get a tax rate, we can get that settled. It's going to be easier down the road. Um, it helps you for two reasons. November is the toughest cash flow crunch season. Um, the bookkeeper and the, and the, and the um, treasurer need to communicate regularly about how much money is in the bank account. Only the treasurer can see that, but yet the bookkeeper is writing checks, and we have to make sure we don't run out of money. It's We haven't, but it's always a bit of a scare because it's just the lowest point of the year until we send out tax bills. So there's always a sense of urgency. As soon as, you know, there, there's typically a special meeting created for the select board to review the proposed tax rate created by the DRA, and then you have some discretion with that um, to lower the tax rate by putting fund balance money against it. Um, so as soon as Chuck lets you know that that's ready or when he thinks that's happening, I would encourage you to create a meeting so that that can happen as soon as possible because even then, it's another three, three or four days out for the tax collector to do what she needs to do with the tax rate to print bills. So, okay. you know, and meanwhile, we've got to pay people and keep things okay. moving. So, um, so if we review that um, spreadsheet over the weekend, at the Monday meeting, you won't be here, but... But you can approve it, and that's right. fine. Okay. And then Chuck could do his thing next week. Or you guys put it in the portal. Yes. Okay. And then and then we will let you know to please come in and sign it. Yeah. Um, or, you know, if it's ready um, for a meeting that's coming up, then, then we'll leave it and make it available for you to sign. But it'll still need your signature after you approve the numbers on the spreadsheet. You put the numbers in the system, print a report, and then you need to sign off on that. But that part doesn't need a meeting because you've already decided that you agree with the numbers presented. Yeah. So now Chuck knows how to enter the, um, the numbers into the portal? Um, more or less, but the portal is really complicated, and, and some, some processes are um, a function of print a form, fill it out, and upload it, um, and, and others like this are put in the numbers, and it prints out a report that then needs to get signed and, and uploaded, and all of those reports need to reconcile with one another. Um, he's going through training next week to use um, to use the portal. Okay. So that'll be um, it's done by a company called Axiomatic, um, who created the custom software for DRA. Okay. Good. Okay. Should should somebody else be there besides just him? I mean, you obviously are are familiar with the process, and now Chuck will be familiar with the process. But do we need to have another person in case Chuck needs like? Back up. Um, I don't think he, I, I think I, I guess I guess my suggestion about that would be it's best handled by one person and if that means he needs help with other tasks or duties that he can't focus on because he's doing that then help him in those ways um, because it's so um, you know if you think about the liability of, of reconciling a checking account and being responsible for that. You don't want to you don't want more than one cook in that kitchen. Well I mean just an um, observer. Like somebody observer. by all means if you want to observe, if you want to partake in that training, you're welcome to um, like every other function in town hall, if somebody were to get hit by a bus, um, it's it's a real serious problem for the rest of staff not being able to know how to perform some essential functions. So mm -hmm. by all means if you want to know more about how it works I think you would actually really enjoy it and appreciate it because it's really, you know, for somebody who appreciates accounting and reconciliations, it's, um, there's, a, there's a lot to learn and it's really interesting how all the parts come together okay. and it's all cyclical and it all play, you know, it, it's all interwoven in a way that you've got a problem, you can't correct it here, you have to, re, you know, correct it three reports back where the information was inputted mm -hmm. and figure out why it was inputted in the way it was. Okay. So, um, it's complicated, but in a way that I think you would enjoy. Can you let me know when that training is? 
Um, yes. And I mean, even just as an observer, um, it might be nice to have more than one person see the process. What type sure. of training is it? Is it virtual? Like it's, computer? It is virtual. Oh, is it virtual? It's not like you're not coming in to sit with him? Oh, not at all. No, it's all virtual because okay. everybody in the state is, is going through these processes oh, perfect. At, at the same time. No, and no, 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 I get you. So, so the other thing I'll, I'll warn you ahead of time is that DRA um, used to have five advisors. You have an advisor that you're working with who's checking all your reports, making sure that everything makes sense, everything um, is approved. Um, that's Michelle Clark. There used to be five people for all of the schools, counties, village districts, cities in the state. Um, now we have two. Mm -hmm. and, and they just hired a third who's brand new. It takes about three years for them to have the experience to be like really moving. So um, that third person's workload, um, they're, they're only handling half their workload and the other two people are handling the other half of it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, this is state funding, um, you know, a result of, of state funding and state government, it's going to be slow to get a tax rate, is, is the message. So, um, when you get to that point, you think you're ready, you're in a hurry for a tax rate, and all you can do is hurry up and wait because your person is not responsive. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Um, so, I'm fine with signing the MS-1, but could I get a copy of this as well? Certainly. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't mind really getting caught up just to see where the, okay. the numbers actually come from. Yeah, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> next thing I'll treat. I have it right here, too, I just saw it and opened it up, so... Sorry. American Legion Entertainment Lab. American Legion Entertainment Lab. Mm -hmm. This is it right here. That's American permission user. to offer liquor outside in the softball field on yep. that Saturday on the 19th for the benefit. I'm okay with that for you. I don't as think you need to go and just sign up. Yeah, he dropped the letter. The softball field. There's only one signature, so. ARP funds, knowledge, and transfer of planning. Um, are we going to set up a meeting that with the well, so water and sewer district? Or? My, my comment around that is is that we now no longer have somebody to work on policy, and, and using the ARPA funds requires policy changes. Yeah. So I was wondering if maybe Allison might take the time to look at the, the texting and driving policy and... So Chuck knows what all the ARPA requirements are, okay. and, and he'll stay on top of what pieces and parts need to happen and what the rules are. Okay. So as far as that, you're fine. Um, who has a sample of you know policy about no texting while driving? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've asked um, the municipal association because you know, everybody's in the same boat where if you don't have that policy, there are lots of people who are having to adopt that policy and right. others. We do have a conflict of interest policy. You can find that on the drive mm -hmm. just by, by a word search. Um, it would just mean that all of the people here at the time, including elected officials, need to sign on that last page signature part. So really the only work you have to do is the texting while driving policy and the um, the seatbelt while driving policy for those who drive for work for the town. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, th I think you're you're in pretty good shape, except that you have to come up with those policies. So um, and that's what I'm concerned about. Is we're not going to have the cycles to come up with these policies. Um, 
I, I think your best resource is for somebody to reach out to the Municipal Association yeah, again in a, in a few months and see if anybody's adopted those, or reaching out to other towns to say, does that, any other town already have this? Because for sure it exists out there in, in five different forms already. Okay. Um, so, so basically they're just asking for a meeting. Do they have a proposal for the work? When in their first email to the board, they brought to your attention repairs to Porter Well so that that could be automated. Um, and I think they had one other project that did not have a dollar amount associated. Um, that's all I can speak to. So, so I, I would just talk to them about if they have numbers for those things, if they have other ideas. But then I would remind the board that the fire station septic system is on the CIP. So you can take it off the CIP if you use ARPA funds to hook up to the water sewer district, assuming they have capacity. Um, you could use the ARPA funds to pay for engineering to figure out how to make that happen, whether or not you need a pump station, which I think you do, um, what size lines, and you know, I don't, like I said, I don't know what their capacity is for adding more, but otherwise it's on the CIP. <coughs> and then the other thing is if you can do that pretty quickly, it would really help logistically with figuring out how to install a vehicle wash station at the fire department, which cannot tie into the state sewer system, the state stormwater system. So you need a place to put a dry well, or a storage tank, the logical place for that is where there's currently a septic tank that you don't really need if you hook up. Um, those vehicle wash stations have to be completed by the end of June to stay compliant with the stormwater okay. permit this coming June. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I feel like we need to be better staffed to address some of these topics personally. Like another select board member needs to be. Involved. No, I do agree. But I'm saying that uh, I'm thinking of just dollar amount that to about thirty-five thousand for the two projects. Um, I, 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 I'm going. I, I'm going by memory, but I don't want to be wrong. So it okay. could be. No, I agree, Kim. Before we make any decisions on taking the funds, that we should probably have a third board member here. So and also probably a little more policy. Um. Yeah. And and, and maybe even. We may have an interim administrator to kind of help manage the process. That, yeah. We're going to look into that quick. Uh, we may, and maybe we'll have a new administrator. Who knows? But is there anything pressing other than budgeting potentially for Porter Well and this other no, other unknown project? So as far as urgency, mm -hmm. it's all about how urgent are those projects for the water sewer district and are they in a position where if the board doesn't agree to provide ARPA funds, do they have to find the money elsewhere and raise the rates to cover it. That, that's a sense of urgency. I don't know if that's real or not. And then um, the, the other thing is, is the vehicle wash stations and, and June. So it's going to take a while to get some engineering done to figure out you know, the cost mm -hmm. and logistics of the septic system if you're going to take that offline. You know? so, so those are the, you know, as far as right this minute budget planning, I don't think there's any urgency necessarily, but the vehicle wash station, getting engineering done, and making sure that the water sewer district is okay with their budget planning, I think are are the, are the points to be thinking about. Okay. Um, so I'm going to circle back to my original statement. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> that I think we need to like. No, I agree. Probably be in a different place in terms of um, staffing to start thinking about all of the. Um, there's no, there's no time period for that. No. Except for the June deadline. Except for that. Next year. Well, so the water sewer district is on a similar calendar that you're on for budget planning. So I'm sure they would love to have an idea sooner rather than later that you are looking favorably on certain projects, but maybe want to wait and think about some other projects, or, or I don't know, you know. So I have a question about that, actually, now I think about it. So, um, in, so we are talking about temporarily funding the water and sewer department? No. So, so no, it's about projects, not like operations. Okay. So what do they need from us, like for funding? 
so that original email outlines like a couple of projects, and I think at least one of them had a dollar amount. Um, I think they're just looking for generally, do you favor the idea of this or not, or do you have other things in mind for the funding? Um, and then if, if it looks like you want to talk about a certain project, mm -hmm. then they might go get an engineer to help them figure it out. But otherwise, you know, they don't have the money to spend on an engineer right now to figure it out if you're not really serious about considering it. Um, so there's really no cost involved. It's just an approval from the select board about the expenditure of the ARPA funds. Correct, because okay. it doesn't affect anybody's budget because the money is there. Mm -hmm. It's just for the board to say, yes, we support this project okay. for this approximate amount of money. Mm -hmm. And then Chuck, um, th this is going to be burdensome on him for a while that he has to report, um, I think, monthly or I'm not sure when, but he knows when. He has to report on expenses, copy invoices, and make sure the state knows how much work money we're spending and on what um, as you spend the money. And just a reminder that before you spend any money, you have to have the policies in place. Um, the district, if the district is going to use the funds, then they should probably adopt the policies too. You can't require that, but I don't, and I, I think the state probably could, but it's something to mention to them that they ought to look into whether or not they have those policies and whether or not they're required to have them, but I think they probably are. Um, okay. And then you need a public hearing. Yes. For, for every project, you need to have a public hearing to say what you're proposing and hear from the public about the idea of what you're proposing. Okay. Because so, I thought you had mentioned that they may potentially not have the funds that they need to kind of get the project started. Well, right. So, for example, automating um, Porter Well, I know, is a priority for them. I don't know how critical that priority is. It might be so critical that it has to happen as soon as possible and they're going to budget for it. But if they budget for it, that means they're not doing these other things. Or maybe they're doing, they have to do all these things and they're going to have to raise rates again. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if you could just say we'll do that one, then then they can say, okay, phew, we'll remove that from our budget and not worry about it because it's happening in this other way. So that's the sense of urgency for them. But I don't know that. I don't know how critical their timing is for any of those projects. Right. So I think, you know, maybe if we can schedule plan to hear the meeting in early October. So yeah. I, I think September is pretty full. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I mean, I've, I've read through the proposals and, and I'll, let, I'll get you, let you put your two cents in too, but I, I think they're both very legitimate and worthwhile to pursue. But yep, I agree on it. So um, probably going to be like maybe the second week of October since it's filling yeah. up quick. But. Can we, um, pick, do we need to pick a date today or can we wait until maybe the next regular select board meeting? Um, that's up to you. The, the only thing that might be worth doing is, is deciding is that its own meeting or is that on a select board night and then we can start to talk to them about what night of the week typically works for them or doesn't work for them so that even though you don't have a date nailed down you can figure out that it really won't be a Monday or, or maybe it'll have to be a Thursday or I don't know what like that. I think it depends on the length of the meeting whether we can lump it into a regular select board meeting but you know, just trying to kind of time box these meetings a little mm, bit better. So if you could maybe um, reach out to them and just see what they think they need an hour, um, and we'll pick a date. Yeah, and what if there's a certain day or night that doesn't work for them for some reason. Yeah. Okay. Good, thank you. Okay. And you want the um, proposal of moving from the general strategic planning worksheet to the time. Right. So, um, so I made a note to, that we that we maybe move this off the agenda and move it to our strategic planning worksheet where it can get prioritized. A um, couple reasons. Well, Caroline had kind of suggested that we address all policy at once. Um, I don't think we're in a position right now to deal with tax collector policy. I so I will. I will. Um, so those things are all on the strategic plan already. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's fine and you can take them off the agenda. I, I would say not to group the tax collector with the other policies just because I forwarded to you the advice of the attorney that she's earning sick and vacation time that as a not employee she doesn't have a right to. Um, so it, it's, you know, 
the advice is hobble along until town meeting, but get a policy approved at town meeting so that she still has some rights, but also that the select board has some sense of accountability from her because as an appointed official, the law says she only has to show up for two hours a month. Um, and, and not that there's a, a risk of that necessarily, but it's just good form to put policies in place while you have good people so that is in that case it? something comes up. So, so she's an appointed official, so she's not at all subject to the personnel policy, so she has no right to be accruing sick and vacation time. So, so what do you do with all the sick and vacation time she has on the books? Well, wait a minute. Aren't you an appointed official? No, I'm an employee. Okay, all right. So we have other appointed officials that um, this falls on to? Not other appointed officials who are um, accruing sick and vacation time and, uh, and are otherwise okay. being treated as employees in that way. Okay. Um, the road agent is appointed, mm -hmm. but, you know, the are, and, and so is the fire chief, and, and, the, and the laws about different appointed officials are different. Um, but, what, you know, so, so the tax collector is appointed annually, yep. and then you can't fire them or discipline them or do anything with them except for potentially not reappoint them until the following year. But is that true of all appointed officials? Um, no, it's, 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 well, so, I, I would so so I would go back to the advice in your email from the attorney about appointed officials because it, it speaks to this somewhat. They all have different RSAs that pertain to them, but essentially the idea is, unless they do something egregiously against the law, mm -hmm. um, it's it's very difficult to get rid of them. Except you certainly don't have to reappoint them. Okay, so I think um, so. So I would say that's kind of a you know b because she's used to you know, enjoying these benefits that she really doesn't have a right to. Um, and this whole two hour a month thing, you know, it, it, it should be addressed, but it can only be addressed at town meeting. Okay. I think I would want to know, um, and I'll probably, I'll look for your email, assuming you sent it since I started. You, it, like, it was one of the ones, like, right after you okay. started that I sent to you. Um, I want to know how this applies to other appointed officials as well, instead of just focusing on one position. And I asked that. It's in there. Okay, good. It's um, do you have a, um, Knowing the Territory? Do you have that book? I'm sorry, what? Knowing the Territory is a okay. book that's published by the Municipal Association that just briefly talks about common topics that come up. Oh, okay. Um, and, um, and uh, if you don't want to work, do you have an extra copy of that here? Yeah, and it's out of no. date, but enough up to date that before you leave, let me give that to you okay. because great. I think you'll find that to be great reading to sort of fill in some gaps for you. Sure. Um, but also you might visit the Municipal Association website. I think I put a link in that email with the attorney's advice, but there's a whole article about the difference between appointed officials and employees mm -hmm. and, and how you, you know, rights and, and pitfalls about treating them the same and, and okay. like that. So, great. Okay, yeah. yeah the Northern great. Territory goes on very specific. It talks about this and it goes on, I think it's 41A or whatever. I can't remember the exact how I say, but it gets real specific. And okay. it'll, it'll probably, it'll probably answer some questions. I think 41 is about tax collectors. Okay, so let me just leave that. So, um, so I guess what I'd like to do is propose that um, we... And there's a sample policy. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but in that email, there's a sample policy. Okay. So, so all you really have to do is revise that to be something that you find agreeable okay. that fits here. Um, so I... Thank you. Um, so I think we should... I'm going to propose that we move um, these topics into the strategic planning worksheet for now and prioritize them, I would say, pretty high. I would agree. I would agree with that. And that we treat them separately. I agree. Um, and then we may even add an agenda item to just review appointed official policy period. Um, yep, I agree with that. Not just and it's it's one. it's a priority, but it's not going to be. I mean, budget's going to be right. top priority for the yeah. you know, this month. Okay. You see, so so they're already on the strategic plan worksheet. You want to add an agenda <coughs> item that says appointed official policies? Is that what you said? Please. Okay. Um, to, and review. And I would say, I mean, you can weigh in, Paul, but we can make them pretty high priority since they're already on the agenda. I agree. Yep. Okay. Um, so we'll take it off the agenda. So I guess I'll make a motion to remove the policy item from the agenda. And put it into the strategic plan. And put it into the strategic plan. I have a second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move on to board member updates, and I'm just going to say, <coughs> excuse me, um, 
first of all, Kevin Hayes was volunteered a lot for the town, and his services were very appreciated. His wife Kelly has lived in town all her life. Um, so, like, my condolence go up to the family. I'm just speaking for myself, but I just wanted to bring that up. Other than that, I don't really have any board member updates concerning business right now. So. Thank you. Do you have um, anything you want to add? No, um, so I have a highway safety planning meeting this coming week. Um, I think it's to deal with handicapped parking down Main Street, and there's one other thing. Not which is, but I'll send um, you the email. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, handicapped parking down on Front Street? You said on Main Street? I'm sorry, at Front. Front Street, yeah. In front of the Mick building in Black Bean. Okay. That's an old agenda item. Okay. Because there's while you guys are talking about it, there's been, I've gotten a couple of emails from a resident that lives downtown. His, his question is valid, and we haven't really given him an answer that, he hasn't got an answer that he can live with, for better words, is we have two hour parking down there. And I understand there's no businesses, but He's asked me a few times, is why do we have two-hour parking when people park there for days at a time? And not enforced. And it's not enforced. So <clears throat> it, it's a good question, and it's something that you know, we probably should address with John. I'm not saying that we go out and take anybody that parks there, but we either enforce two-hour parking or remove the signs. Because if we don't enforce it down on Main Street, why would someone have to like come in down? I mean, if we don't enforce it on Punch Street, then like on Main Street, there's no parking. Why are people... Gonna. You certainly could remove it. I, I think the chief would tell you that it's kind of a circumstance of the pandemic that the businesses are not, you know, open the way they used to be. And mm -hmm. so when the businesses were open, it was necessary and they would enforce it. But with the businesses not being open or not as many being open as much. Right. I, I, I won't disagree with that, but we have talked about this even back when Bob was here. And um, pretty much it was even when businesses were opened, you know, from nine at night. Uh, whatever, six in the morning, it was never enforced. People would always park there. So I'm not making a big hours. issue of it, but huh? Maybe putting hours, like two hour parking Maybe. between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. or something. That like. would be probably suffice because, you know, I, I, I just don't like telling a resident that you know, there's no business with we have two hour parking. We just we <coughs> pay attention to it because it's really something we should pay attention to. So I agree. If we could just put hours. Where is that? Right down the main street, right, right down the front street where there are. Black Bean used to be. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't even know if that is that Jitterbug still there. I don't know. So, so what do the signs down there say now? Twelve parking. That's it. Okay. Just two hours. Okay. Um, that's it. Um, and the, the resident who's got home every time, he's not really upset by it. He's just saying, well, "Why do we have the signs that we don't enforce?" I don't have any. Called the police, you know. Uh, I don't know if he's called the police or if he's got a hold of me. That's another one of those sticky situations. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um. All right, so okay. anything else? Um, let's see. Uh, hold on, hold on. Nope, I don't. Okay, perfect. I mean, not perfect, thank you. Um, I'm going to make sure you have these, please. Yeah, I have a few things. Um, there's a joint loss meeting on Tuesday morning. Um, the joint loss safety committee is, is a committee we're required to have by law for the size organization that we are. It's, an, it's, um, it's prescribed to be an eight member board with four supervisors and four non-supervisor employees and they meet and discuss any accidents that have happened or safety concerns. And it was due to their initiative that we have um, first aid kits now in all the facilities and AEDs and they make sure that um, employees um, have their CPR training up to date, which it's not by the way and that's something on their radar to renew. Um, they will, I'm sure, work amongst themselves for who, who, how to replace me with another employee, but some other employee or manager is going to have to um, step into that. Um, but they meet quarterly. Um, as prescribed by law, though at least there are no reporting requirements for that anymore. So um, those typically um, happen on Tuesday mornings at 9. Uh, Chuck is doing a number of trainings coming up. He's 
doing the municipal tax um, portal as I described. There's also welfare training and budget preparation training. So um, that's good and meets the training. Um, but they're each like an hour long or more. So, so that's just you know a drain on his time to bring to your attention. How is he, is he, how's he doing? Maybe not a fair question for you, but stress level with taking on some extra tasks as you leave. Um, I, I think he's got some concerns yep. without knowing what your expectations are. So I, you know, he's open, but um, I don't know what his total availability is because he does have another job. Yep. So you know, I'll let him speak to that. We'll ask him. But um, I think he's flexible and open. Okay, okay. but he's not. I hope he's not really stressed out for this situation. Um, I, I think uncertainty always brings. I think every, everybody will feel better after tomorrow night, having a little bit okay. more nailed down about mm -hmm. what the expectations are, but okay. not being sure if he's, you know, going to be on the hook for everything I do. Yep. You know, and I don't think he thinks that, but you know, he, you it. just don't know. And until you don't know, you know, when you don't know, it's, it's, I think, hard not to be stressed. I totally agree. And one of the reasons I want to be sure he's part of this. And I'm, you know, it, it helps to not have a middleman and have him be able to talk to you directly about those things, his availability and, and what he's good at and what he can't do and, and all those things. Okay, great. Um, the planning board met on Tuesday. They had a public hearing and have approved changes to the regulations so that their noticing requirements no longer require newspaper notifications, which is really helpful. Um, we've been having trouble, by the way, with newspaper um, notifications because the newspaper has not been, now that they're a national um, company, they're not responsive to posting things, posting things when we need to and providing proof of things having been printed. So that'll be better, I think, for, for everybody. Um, Stormwater is meeting next week. Um, we're continuing to work on the annual report, but I just want to remind you all that we're operating without Paul Gazal, who did so much for so long, and, and that's a void that really needs to be addressed sooner rather than later, because there, um, it's a highly technical permit that is evolving all the time, and somebody needs to be continually involved in um, understanding what the permit's um, about and, and what the calendar items are throughout the year and making sure those calendar items happen. So um, I'm not, you know, so this annual report is due September 28th. We'll review that again um, at the next meeting and I don't think it'll take more than an hour, but at the same time, I'm not feeling very positive and confident about being able to wrap up this annual report due to the complexity of what it's asking for and you know some of the things that Paul Cazal was responsible for um, it's there's nothing simple about it and so I'm, I'm very um, I, I just want to share with you my sense of alarm about that and I don't have an answer except to say um, I hope that you will find a way for it to be different going forward because it cannot continue to hobble along with um, the, the way it is. So, what do you recommend? Um, I, you, I would suggest that you have an employee who is dedicated and responsible for understanding the permit and also making sure that the different people need to be um, aware of, of what needs to be happen and when. For example, the vehicle wash stations, who's going to make sure, you know, we've budgeted for we could do, um, you know, the engineering now. I'm not sure if that makes sense, not knowing what's going to happen with the the sewer line at the fire station. But um, Sunlay typically does the mailings for sending out the litter um, mailings and septic um, mailings. She doesn't know what the permit requirements are for when that needs to happen, and so. You know, somebody needs to keep an eye on the ball, and, and those tasks are the smaller part of it, but um, understanding why we need to do it, because every year it's different. So just because it's, you know, what we did last year, um, every year it's more. So somebody needs to understand in what way is it more. So my suggestion is that it's somebody that is attached with the highway department, or perhaps 
Tom Clark. Um, but George would cringe if I suggested that mm -hmm. you give this to him because it's right. it's not okay. his Bailey wig and, and he really doesn't appreciate it. But okay. Tom Clark possibly because the other thing that really needs to happen, which hasn't been happening, is that um, stormwater really ties into the planning board um, and this local source water protection grant that Stratton Regional Planning is doing with us, they, they are auditing our planning regulations to make sure they're stormwater compliant, which is fantastic and they will recommend to the planning board, update your regulations to this level and then if you want, here are some other ways to make your regulations better still. Um, but who's going to make sure that Stormwater knows that that happened and that the planning board, if they have questions or concerns about that, that it gets back to Stormwater. But the planning board doesn't really understand Stormwater stuff. So, so Tom Clark is a, I think, um, a logical conduit for that information, but he hasn't been involved except in inspecting um, construction sites for stormwater compliance. Um, so he would have a learning curve and it's going to be a lot more time for him. Do we have a job description for Tom? No, he just has many titles. Um, so he's our, he's our building inspector, he's our um, health officer, he's our code enforcement officer, and, and our land use administrator, um, which means that he attends the planning board and zoning board meetings in order to make sure that people understand the laws and the rules and um, he will um, communicate with the town engineer for the planning board to say um, is, is the project as, um, as proposed by the applicant compliant or not compliant and the engineer will, will chime on, in on that and, 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 and Tom kind of pulls all that together and discusses with applicants process and some things like that. I also do that. I do that on a more basic level. Um, so, so essentially, land use administrator, code, building, and health. Okay. I think he's going to need a job description if we add more to his place. I, I don't disagree. He's also paid um, very, very uniquely as far as a town employee where he's salary based on seven hours a week. Yeah. So sometimes he works more when it's a week with a meeting and he's got a lot of inspections and other weeks he works less. There are more building permits in the summer than in the winter. So you um, have to review that with him and see his availability is. Yes, I would, I would encourage you to you know, discuss with him. Sure, that's good. So Thank you for that I agree, uh, but one person I find that has a lot of knowledge on it and I know he's not the person that's going to be responsible for stuff, but Mike does have a really good knowledge on it. Mike LaPointe, he's on the Stormwater Committee, and he's an engineer, which is really helpful because okay. he certainly does understand it in, in a very different level than any of the rest of us because he's an engineer. Um, and I, I try regularly to rope him into doing more, but um, he's very um, he's very busy with CNJ. So that's... Yeah. I'm not likely to change anytime soon. But he's definitely an asset on that committee, though. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else going on? Um, the only other thing, Kim, is that I ask that you give me permission um, through Google to add things to that list. Um, and well, if you sure. don't, that's fine. But I, I would suggest that you add to the policies um, a remote work policy, because there isn't one. So What list is that? That the um, the list of um, your strategic planning stuff and policies. Oh, oh you don't have permission. To I don't have. I can comment, but I can't edit. Oh, okay. okay. So right now, there's no guidance around can people work from home, and if so, how much, and do they have to be available for town hours or not? All of them or not? Um, so, it, I think especially with the pandemic, wait, you know, ever in flux, it would be really helpful to have. Okay. a policy so that people um, know what your expectations no, are and you've got consistent service for the public. Do you want me to just add it or do you want me to give you permission? I can do either one. Um, I didn't know that we had permission to do it. Well, because I thought you organized it and sorted it for us. 
And then I emailed it to you and you put it in Google. And so now it's oh. your Google document. Oh. And so you set the Google permissions, oh, okay. which means that you shared it. And when you share it, you have an opportunity to change the permissions. Okay. But I think the default was probably common and you didn't notice that. So um, that could be. So, so if, you would, if you would share um, editing, that would probably be helpful if you can figure that out. And if not, then you can do the and stuff. Yeah. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Yeah, uh, I I can't think of anything. Is there any other business to come to the board? I do have a topic I want to mention. Nope, that's fine. Um, and so this is something I kind of um, want to bring forth in your opinion. So some of these special meetings, Paul, um, you know, very targeted meetings. Um, I kind of am proposing that we, since we're not taking public input. Um, that we don't necessarily have to do Zoom meetings. Um, but how do you feel about that? If there's no public input. Like input. for tomorrow, I feel fine with that. Okay. That's something that I do with the Prince of regular the select board meeting, other than different than all right. Tiger meetings, I'm fine with that. So I would just caution you about the user experience around, it, you know, is there a link for tonight? Is there not a link for tonight? And also, there's not really a way to record meetings without the virtual component. Mm -hmm. So. That may be a reason to, to, to keep it, just so that you've got a recording, but also so that people can listen. Even if they're not commenting, they can still witness the meeting from home. So we do have it recorded, and we have sound made. So it, it, it's up to you. Oh, okay. I just, I just, you know, I, I would anticipate feedback from the public about, yeah. you know, is there a link tonight or is there not a link tonight? Well, the, isn't that only um, publicized through the website, anyways? Like, so they, like, they have to know the meeting. It's through our town mailer that they get the Zoom meeting. So, so the Zoom link is on the public calendar. If there's a Zoom link, it's, it's part of the meeting information on the town calendar, okay. and it's posted in that way. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you from experience. You know, that doesn't mean people know it. Yeah. You know, they they get an idea. You know, we, I still got an inquiry this past week that the transfer station opened on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And, and it's been at least five or six years that the transfer station has not been open on a Tuesday after a holiday, but people still don't know that. I guess it just, you know, uh, unless sometimes, and I have to say honestly, unless you're sometimes looking at the screen with me, I'm not always aware. It's um, tricky. But um, I, I don't care. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say I don't care. I think, um, I think it's important for the regular meetings. Um, I personally, if, I think if people are really interested in um, targeted meetings like the town administrative transition, um, then come on in. Yeah, well, I was saying this is open to the public, we just have to take public comment. Right? right. Pretty much. Right. Yeah, so, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think the decision is, the question is, are we always going to do Zoom no matter what the meeting is, or are we going to say, you know, definitely for regular select board meetings. Um, I think that's what I'm, I'm, I'm going for. I would personally say, my opinion is for all meetings we presume. Obviously, it's not public. We just keep it that way, just so the public has. I mean, there may be some people that don't have the ability to come here, but still want to be here. Some people are interested in town eventually or tomorrow. So that's what I said. Okay. You agree? Um, I, it, it's just managing it, you know. Okay. Um, so if I, for some reason, I'm not here, for example, somebody's got to manage it. Okay. Um, besides me. Okay. Alright. Um, so, the other thing is these, um, these specialized meetings, can we be sure that we tell them what the subject is, um, instead of saying select board's meeting at this time, without any real understanding of what we're meeting about? Alright, so, so the, if we can just go back for a minute. So we're always having links. Is that what you just agreed to? Right now. Okay. Um, because I, I, I can they see meetings like like several meetings a week, and, and they don't know if their agenda right. item that they care about is tonight right. or not tonight. I, I get your point. Um, I have two comments about that. One is when you look at the public calendar, I can say I can put something like you know select board meeting R E you know, TA transition or something. You've got to make it really condensed. Mm -hmm. so but, right. Yeah, and then I'm not even sure if you're going to see all that. Right. Um, I think I'm more concerned about the mailer, you know, that people, because I think, 
I honestly, I rely more on the mailer. Than so you're talking about the company. email yes. notification. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so just a, a very simple subject. Um, you know, or and this, I guess, this is kind of where we go back to whether it is an agenda or not an agenda. Well, and so the, my other comment would be, if you um, sometimes business comes up that you really need to attend to, and you weren't aware of it, and yet. Phew, there's a meeting already posted for tomorrow. So if you say that tomorrow is really just for this one agenda item, then um, the public has a legitimate gripe if you snuck in this other decision, even though you were doing that with the best of intentions. So, so that's why I tend to notice things generally, because it gives you the flexibility for whatever might happen. Um, so, so just be aware of that, that if you post it with just that strict thing, I think you certainly could, um, but it just limits your own flexibility if a department head comes in with a crisis and really needs a decision on whether or not you're going to fund the washed out road that just happened from the storm last night, or, or, or who knows what. Well, how do you manage that on a weekly basis now, you know? Um, it's it's efficiency, and you know, like, it, it, it kind of depends. Sometimes there's a need for an emergency meeting. Um, it, it kind of depends on what it is sometimes. And, and it puts the, the department heads, frankly, in a really difficult position because their authority to handle an emergency is, is not really clear, depending on what it is. You know, they can certainly repair a vehicle that gets gets hit or is, is some, somehow compromised um, to get it back on the road quickly. but. There's a whole lot of gray about what could go wrong and, and whether or not it's an emergency. And so it's, it's a catch-22. They could really annoy you by asking for an emergency meeting that isn't an emergency. Or they could really annoy you because they decided to take care of it when you thought it was an emergency that needed a meeting. I guess I'm just concerned that if you don't really try to stick to targeted meetings, that you then start lumping things into these targeted meetings. So, and there's a risk of that too. Yeah. So, you know, that's up for you two to decide. It, you know, there's no way to win it. You know, you're going to lose, whichever way you do it, there's something, there's a benefit and a drawback. I think, like, if you can, like, tomorrow, the way it just you know, it says how an administrator updates the terminal or something like that. It's possible. So then most people in the public would know. I'm not, really uh, interested in I'm not interested in that, or right. maybe I am, but, right. but then you know, when something else comes up, like special, but I guess it could be We're talking about mm -hmm. you know, the administrator updates the terminal. Yeah. 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 On Facebook, um, I didn't get to it today. I forgot. That they're, they're still under boards and committees. If people go to the website, go to boards and committees and select board. Mm -hmm. There is a link there. Yeah. Agendas. Okay. Good. Awesome. Um, but I think, I think for these, I have to say for these targeted meetings, I say that we, you know, give a simple subject, um, mostly in the town mailer, not necessarily in the ca calendar, um, just so people know what they're potentially. You know, making time for it in their day. Okay. Um, so, for example, um, town administrative transition, you know, for tomorrow. And then, um, yeah, so just for the, the specialized meetings. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all I have for your other business. Okay, so is there any community input? Yes. Lorraine Hansen and Watson Lane. Um, two things. I just want to mention. I hope you are considering perhaps um, an interim town administrator for sure because I think you understand in these last few weeks as Caroline has advised you of her, that she'd be leaving, you know, there's so much information she can give you about how things can go and stuff like that. And, and frankly, even though she's got the help of other people in the department, I don't think that that's something that you'll be able to rely on other people to the extent you can rely on her or a skilled town administrator who can give you the advice as you need it as you go along, especially as we enter into a very, very busy budget season 
and I think you're clear, you know, you know what, how much work is going to be involved with that. Not to mention then you have the audit coming up and then you have to prepare all the warrants for the town meeting deliberative session in early next year. So there's a lot of work that's out there and I think you probably already feel you might be pretty much understaffed if you don't get some help there. But that's what I would recommend and I think you have to realize, I think that even though um, as, as our current administrator leaves, she puts in, you know, a 40-hour week and probably plus, 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 because she does attend all these other meetings besides doing this stuff and handling what she does. So I really do hope that you consider an interim administrator. Um, uh, can I comment on that? Yeah. So I actually intend to have a conversation with MRI about their services tomorrow. Oh, that's wonderful. If you can, because I think it would be so helpful to you both. Well, I think it, you're right. We need to investigate for sure. I think Paul has a plan to talk to. I tried to Primex today. Mm -hmm. um, Primex told me it was kind of an interesting conversation. Primex did have a lot more involvement with recruiting, setting up interviews, mm -hmm. and there um, And it was an interesting article about what they did in Berlin eight years ago. But fast forward to this last couple of weeks, the town of Berlin wants to town manager. I was talking to Primex, they're taking themselves out of that role because of the business with taxes and everything. So Primex is going to give me, give us templates for everything to do to hire someone, like questions, and, but they're not going to go any farther than that. So That's still really helpful. It is helpful, but yeah, I, was, helpful. I was, um, I don't want to say, slightly disappointed that they weren't, they weren't more involved than they were up to, up to five years ago. Mm -hmm. but, it's they've kind of gone out of that, but they're going to send us some good information. And after that, probably already have it. So, um, I think and if closing. you want that level of help, MRI, just like they offered with the police chief position, they can hire. They can handle the search if you if you want them to hire someone for you and talk to you about what kind of person you're looking for. You know, you can you can hire that out to them while you may have an interim here as well. They offer a variety of services. Yeah, so I was going to try to think. Alan Gold. Alan Gold. So, G-O-U-L-D. So, yes. we're going to look what we're probably looking for. This isn't positive set in stone, but what we're probably looking for is in the interim, uh, a contempt type service to help us out. Mm -hmm. But the intention is obviously to search for a full time, search for some of the folk here in this position. Good. I, I can't say so sooner than later. Uh, I know. Job market out there is pretty good. I'm sure it's yeah, it's, maybe it's, part of the reason Caroline left. Not my business, but I know there's a lot of jobs. <laughs> Those are jobs. I love jobs out there. Right nice. so. It's it's tough, but I'm glad you're considering that. And the other thing, and I'm happy that you made a decision tonight to continue everything on Zoom, because I think there are a lot of people who may have interest that don't make it down and have their own reasons. You know, with this COVID back and forth and stuff, people may be afraid to come out. And, or just can't. You know, one I day agree. they can come out and another night they can't. So I'm so glad you've made that decision. I, I, I agree. I, I think it's it. handy for all residents, but specifically residents that may not be able to make it here for certain handicaps or because they're worried about COVID or whatever. I agree. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> is there any community input? Uh, any community input online? Oh, sorry. Oh, let's see here. One second. I think that's Dave. Um, let me turn you up. Is that you, Dave? Yeah. Okay, let me turn you up here. Oh, you go. Okay. Uh, um, a little faint. Hang on one second. This is Dave's mom. Can you go to settings? 
Yeah. Can you hear him at all? Or can you hear him? Because so, it was coming. So. Yeah. We, we can hear you, but you're very faint, Dave. So I'm trying to adjust. And it's all the way up. I like that and have it come from the computer. Well, then we lose the microphone. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah, Mr. Hill, you can go ahead if you would just speak as loud as, as, as loudly as you can. Yes, that would be great. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. So, I'd like to just say, I know they said that they don't have to notify the people in writing for this, but I think when you have the original meeting posted for this hearing, this was, you know, this came from the Iowa State Committee back in September, and they sent it to you guys in, in December, and the meeting was posted in a, a public meeting that was, that was scheduled between Christmas Day and New Year's Day, which I think was horrible. The meeting wasn't posted well enough, but I would, I would advise you to check RSA 432, where you just type not a separate notice. Um, and when they did reschedule this meeting, um, you know, it's great that you went back and you looked at the posting for 824, but I think if you go back and you look at the posting for 510, the posting for 510 was regarding the original, uh, the original change to the ordinance. It wasn't the number by number. And I think in that mm -hmm. case, you had overwhelming um, opposition to the new parking ordinance at that meeting. So I, I think the public spoke on that on on May 10th. Um, so I, I just like I just like to stress like to share with you how stressful this has been um, and, and how a long process this has been. I don't think it should have even come to the select board. I don't think the select board should have heard it because it came from the safety committee. It wasn't a safety issue. I think the same thing happened the second time. So I think you're being, you know, advised by people who maybe shouldn't be, you know, maybe you should question their advice. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably like, this has been the most frustrating thing I've ever had to deal with. I had to go to the emergency room in April because this was causing me so much stress. So I would just like to, you know, just do the right thing. Um, Um, so, Dave, just so you're clear, um, are, are you saying that you don't think we necessarily need to have another public hearing? Because um, we did schedule one to re basically reverse the change to the ordinance. I, I think I think you just need to change the ordinance back. I think you've heard from the public. I think you've heard from the public twice. I think when public when we got public comments the second time, the public comments were not about the address by address. They were asking you to reverse it. When you got public comments the first time, they were just asking you to reverse it. So I think the first sex, the first time you did it, I think it was illegal. I don't think it should have been done. My state senator advised me to hire an attorney at that time, and I never took that step. But I think, you know, he's the one that pointed out RSA 43-2. And I think the May, I think the May meeting, the May public hearing, kind of said it all. But that's, you know, that's my thoughts on it. Okay. And that's, public, that, that's online, so you can look at that meeting, you can go back and see it. Okay. But I don't know, I don't know where we go from here, but like, now if you're going to do an October 4th meeting, and I guess you probably wouldn't make the decision at that meeting, so you probably have to schedule another hearing. So it probably won't be until, you know, November or December. No, I don't so, think that's true, Dave. I think that the select board could make the decision at a public hearing. At the public hearing. All right. Um, you know, we've, and that's, I, in my experience, decisions have been made at public hearings. If, if you have to have a business meeting after the public yes. hearing, you yeah. can't make a decision at a public mm -hmm. hearing. But, right. you mm -hmm. know, if you do it the way you did it with this last one, where it flows right into a meeting, mm -hmm. then yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I will just, since Kim, you were not involved in this topic back, you know, okay. to the time frame he's speaking to. As a result of Mr. Hill's initial complaint about RSA 43-2, we did get advice from the attorneys at the Municipal Association, and that RSA references the laying out of roads. So the noticing of this change in the ordinance does not require any kind of special noticing, but it refers back to what I said about how 
um, those residents didn't find that the noticing was sufficient and they would prefer to be mailed, which I think is a, certainly a reasonable comment to make, mm -hmm. but, but that RSA was found not to pertain. So I will find that email and, and mail it to you, but it references the laying out of roads, which is a different process. Okay, thank you. I don't believe that RSA references laying out of roads. I think that RSA, that RSA is Title Three, Town, City, Villages, Districts, and Unincorporated Places. Chapter 43 pertains to hearings before town or certain other local officers. And 43.2 says notice of hearing, they shall appoint a time and a place of hearing in order and notice thereof to be given to all persons whose property or rights may be directly affected by the by giving them or leaving them at their abode an attested copy of the petition in order 14 days at least before such hearing or if such persons are non-residents by publication. If the owner is under guardianship, such notice shall be given to his guardian. If the owner is a minor or under any legal disability, the judge or probate may appoint the guardian for such persons to whom notice shall be given. All right, um, so Dave, I'm going to go back and look at the minutes of the May meeting, um, and I know at, at our next select board meeting we may ask to, you know, have a discussion about that again. Yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say pretty commonly, Dave, on the 4th of October, we should, we as a select board should be able to make a decision. Right, agreed. Thank you. Okay, Thank thanks, you, Dave. Dave. Uh, any other community input? I have a comment. Um, this is Andrew Cass, 15 Old Mill Lane. Okay. Yep, go ahead, Andrew. Good to hear her perfectly. Um, just a couple of things. Um, I would ask the select board regarding the security and telephone updates. Um, again, you have lots of folks advising you about needed updates and security and access controls. I'm just going to ask you that you investigate the, the true needs of, of these updates for $60,000 expenditure. Um, I've worked at Town Hall for quite some time. I, I question, you know, do we really need additional security cameras in Town Hall, um, additional access controls? Um, Sean indicated that only the select board, the office has. Um, access control, the, the town clerk's office has that access control as well. I'm just questioning the need. So I would, I would um, urge the board to just investigate that a little more and, and determine whether or not that $60,000 expenditure is really needed. Okay. Um, so Andrea, I, and, um, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry? I, I did ask um, John um, to plan to bring in Accutel again to kind of go over the need? Thank you for that. And I, and I know that telephones are included in this upgrade as well. And, uh, you know, the phones are new since I've been there. I've been there 12 years. I think that they were probably installed eight or so years ago. Um, you know, again, um, a lot of businesses via email, we do get calls. The phone system has more capabilities than, than we were even aware of. Um, Chuck's, uh, I, I believe his father was in the telephone business, so he has determined that our phone system has far more capabilities than we were even utilizing. So again, I, I, I'm not opposed to spending the money, I just want to make sure we're spending money that's needed to be spent. Uh, are we upgrading systems that truly need to be upgraded? Thank you, Andrea. Thanks, Andrea. Anybody else? And I do have one more. I'm sorry. Um, with regard to um, a town administrator, um, I want to commend Caroline. She's done a fantastic job. Um, I would ask the board to keep in mind that historically, um, in the past, the select board, they were, it was a working committee. Um, you know, right now it's a three-member board. Um, the town of Rollinsford, I do have, believe, has the authority to have up to a five-member board. With board members holding down full-time jobs and trying to juggle um, management of, of the town in addition to, to their work, 
maybe this is a, a, a time that the board should move to seeing if, if you can have five members to, um, to just lessen the load on all of the individual members. Um, I, I do feel that relinquishing decision-making authority to a town administrator is a slippery slope. It, it leaves the board in a position of not knowing um, and I, I think it, it's true with all of what Caroline has, the tasks that she's performing, that the board is now becoming aware of it and is going to have to juggle that. So that's just my caution going forward. Okay. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you. Jody. My questions will be all over the place because you guys had covered a lot today. So when you guys were talking about Andrea, did you say Highway was appointed? <coughs> the road agent. Excuse me. No, he not was hired. He's an employee. Um, he's treated as an employee, but technically the road agent um, is an appointed position that's appointed every year. No, it's and not. I, did I, you change this in the last no, three years? It, it have, if you look at the town report, it, it's listed that... I, I, I can't can argue it. it. I can just, you know, we can go back in the minutes and speak okay. to it. I can, I, I can I, give you the it's argument. My so, I'm sorry, I missed the question. When I was on select board, yep. we had a committee to hire our road agent. Mm -hmm. He is a hired person with a pension. Mm -hmm. He does. I'm not disputing that. Okay. So, to say he is appointed every year. The following year, we did not appoint him. I must have missed that when I was out. But I didn't hear that conversation about... About elected and appointed officials. Right, and I know we're talking about the tax collector when I left. And I must have talked about Highway when I... I know five... And they met, and, okay. But Highway Chief was just put in, and the town voted, yeah, the select board's going to appoint. Mm -hmm. So... When was the road agent ever in appointed? We hired Jeff, we hired Al, we hired George. I don't know that. So the police chief is appointed as well. Even though he has a three year contract, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, every department is appointed, it says here. It says this in the town report, I should say. So police chief, tax collector, highway department. Health officer, town clerk. You can see that in the minutes we're in the first meeting after the annual meeting. So, so with the process in, in hiring the road agent, you need to know who you're going to appoint, which is a hiring process, and there was a committee for that, and a person was selected. Um, and, and he's handled in every way like an employee, um, but it is different in that way, and, and the RSA is different than it is for the fire chief or the tax collector. And what about the town clerk? Because he The town clerk is elected and cannot be appointed. Okay, so the tax collector and the treasurer, you could make those uh, appointed or you can make those elected, and town meeting decides that, so you can change that if you want to, but the, t um, the town clerk must be elected. Yeah, because it, it does say town clerk is underappointed, so this is wrong anyways. So, um, okay. So okay. I guess my question, I want to make sure Joey's question is as well. So, I mean, people are hired. I mean, tax collector was how, how hired, and the town clerk was hired. So George was hired. Are you saying after the first year he's hired? After that he's appointed, right? After the first um, year. I, I think that this is a very nuanced and complicated situation mm -hmm. that the town has never fully wrapped their head around properly but that when he was hired, um, he was hired and he was treated as an employee, and this idea of annually appointing people has just been kind of a formality that the select board does that they don't, they've never really understood. Okay. And, then, and then this thing about the tax collector came to light, which also brought to light the idea that the road agent is appointed, though, though they're, they're very different in their appointed nature, that they have different RSAs. Okay, that, and about that's a, them. You that's know? a good reason to actually do some research. Yes, on this. absolutely. Yeah, you're going to like that book when you start reading through the long territory. It's very specific. Did you have another good job? Oh, yeah. Well, that would be in the minutes, too. If George was appointed, it would be in the minutes. Mm -hmm. the minutes. Yes. Yes. So, yes. so are you saying he's appointed or not appointed? He is appointed. Okay. 
and that, and yet he is also treated like an employee, which is appropriate, as opposed to the tax collector who is appointed and treated like an employee, and that's not appropriate. We've been told. Okay, so we get a we so get that's the research. research. Okay, research. Yes. Got it. Thanks, Julie, for bringing oh. that up. Okay, next topic. Mm -hmm. The homeless encampment. With all good intentions, if you disperse a homeless encampment, um, they then become um, part of our welfare system. Mm -hmm. And under RSA 165, they are, it, it is our obligation um, to them. Shel shelter them um, and provide that. So as an example, um, there was a campground in a city that kicked out a bunch of people. They ended up going to an encampment. The city came in and said, no, you can't be here. And that city um, was responsible for those people for many, 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 many months. Is this New Hampshire we're talking about? Uh-huh, New Hampshire. Just yeah. mm -hmm. So it is our obligation to find shelter for them if they seek it. If you offer shelter and refuse, you've met your obligation. But the shelter has to be available. So if someone says, I don't want to go to a shelter, I want a motel, and you can get them into a shelter, and they refuse, we've done our legal obligation. I just want you to, with good intentions, come consequences that you nope. don't think of. So and, I just wanted to put it out there for you guys. And, um, this has been a topic that's come up several times. And and it'll keep coming. We are aware of the fact that of that situation. So Kat has a homeless outreach. Her name is Sarah Jones. She actually brings them tents. She brings them propane tanks. She brings them these things. So she would be a person to talk to. Who's that? Her name is Sarah Jones. She works for Community Action. And she is the homeless outreach for them. Is that a community action? Is that like a job uh, like board? Stratford, Stratford County, um, Stratford County um, and all the other counties have a community action partnership is what they're called. Um, they're located in the new red building, the blue, no, what's it called? Blue building? So the blue building? The, no, the, the new red building where St. Charles was oh, in Dover. Yeah, they're there now. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, oh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so they do a lot of things, but that is one of their things that they do do. Okay. Um, the other thing was, when you guys were talking about the town hall and digging it up, we just dug it up in 2017, and... It's the police department. <laughs> yeah, for the flooding in the police department. And I had said, we got to do it right the first time, and they didn't pick that option, and now we're opening it up again, and I knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. We should have moved to Silver Street. Where are we opening up? <laughs> the foundation, the your foundation. We literally dug all this wall and all this wall right. and found out that there are giant boulders as your foundation. And so it was a matter of time. And Gagnon's came in with, a, with the proper way to do that is that you build up the cement around the blocks and pour true foundation. And um, it was voted down, and they went with the middle option. So down below our foundation on this front wall, you have gravel, thick layer of plastic, boards, and I think more gravel, and then dirt. So that will eventually cave in as well. But yeah, the, the flood in the police station hasn't been an issue since 17, correct? I just want to make sure I understand uh -huh. that part of the deal. Right, but I... We're talking I, in front now about some structural damage we're going to talk, look at for the portico, right? Right, and, and I, at sure the time that, I wanted to check that as well. Yep. And that wasn't... Okay. They, they said no. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not missing so. something about there's been no flood in the police department and everything has been... Sure. Okay. So, um... That was it. Anything else? Um, one second, um, Nancy, I'm just going to let Carrie go. She's got her hand in the air for sure. a long time. Okay, Carrie. Hi, um, Carrie Boyle, 150 Clement Road. Um, so I, I just wanted to um, 
you know, earlier you guys talked about Kelvin, uh, Kelvin Park, um, and um, people that have been living out behind in that area. Um, I guess my thought is, um, is there any concern? Because it, it always seems like with Rollinsford, if there's any question about, you know, it's who owns who owns the property, does the town own it? It always goes right away to, you know, if something happens on it, is the town liable uh, liable for something? So they always look to that, you know, the, you know, the the legal aspect. Is, could the town be liable for anything? Um, and I just want, want to make sure everyone seems to be talking about like the town's responsibility in, you know, whether they would have to try to find housing and relocating people, but. I'm just wonder, you know, want to make sure that the town is also considering, are there any, you know, could, could the town be held responsible for anything that could um, potentially happen out there? I also, um, Kim brought up, um, if something, if someone decided to set something up down by the gazebo. Um, and I think, you know, it's sad to say that I think that would be treated very differently than um, this is being treated. Um, I think if something like this were to be happening in other parts of town, maybe Sligo or Bear Road or Woods Run, um, I just I just think more attention would be paid to it. So um, I'm glad that the board is going to um, maybe look at the area. I know the police are going back out there, but um, we should be thinking about could the town be liable for anything with, with people living out there. So, thanks. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. I just have um, one quick thing also. I, I suggested that- Nancy, can you state your name? Nancy Day on 44 Rollins Road. Thank you. Um, I suggested also when we did this in 2017 that it's a stopgap because they stopped right at the stairs and it needed to be fully done and checked. And I was told that they didn't need to. They thought it was structurally sound in 2017. Now my other topic is, is if you want to make it specific on your meetings, Maybe you should write on it saying main topic will be, and whatever the main topic's going to be, other business may be needed. Okay. And then you Sounds cover it. Right. Thank you, Nancy. Anything else? No? Nope. Any other uh, public input? So, if there's no other business, I was going to make a motion to adjourn. Um, I'm done with that. Done with that? Okay. You want a second? Oh, sorry. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.